This episode of Movie Night Autopsy is brought to you by Cyberpunks.com. High-tech lowlifes who write about new technology, robots, internet politics, and the artificial intelligence singularity that will one day rule us all. They're nice enough to sponsor this review, so they definitely know a good thing when they see it. If you want to learn more, just visit cyberpunks.com, C-Y-B-E-R-P-U-N-K-S dot com. All right, let's cue that spooky, spooky funk. Welcome back to Movie Night Autopsy, the, the one-stop shop for all the best film celebrating and, of course, the cultural talking about. My name is Sam. I'm Chad. I'm Asher. And I'm Grace. And today we are here to talk about yet another easy trek and romp through the park with oh, the Field of Daisies. No big deal. No big deal. It's just a good old, good old-fashioned what have for. Uh, <laughs> A good old fashioned what happened. Yeah, that's what this it is. is. We're off yeah. to a great start tonight, great. folks. Classic alert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but let's let's get right down right down to it. Wait, you mean um, like into the anthill? Like no, that go, far no, down? You go, no, you go through the anthill. You don't go into it. It's hollowed out. Well, before we go making a mountain out of a molehill here. It's an anthill. An let's anthill. just are those things ants? They're arachnids. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves, much like the people in the movie that we're here to talk about. Ooh, so let's just good. let's just let's just take it from the top. Um, I don't think any of us have calmed down from Starship Troopers, so I'm not even gonna bother by asking the question because we literally all just watched it like five minutes ago. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've been listening to us for any amount of time, you've probably noticed our rule is. Is usually uh, somebody has to have not seen this. Somebody and has to be watching it. Guess who that poor it, unfortunate uh, soul was tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it was me. No. <laughs> so Asher is the one <laughs> who times. didn't who didn't see this movie at any point in time before. Grace actually, conversely, had seen the movie before. When That's did you first. see the movie, Grace? Um, I don't know. When I was like a young kid, I had a, a bunch of male cousins up in Canada, and. We watched this a lot many times, so I felt really cool to finally know I watched something like seven more times than Asher did. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen this one. But, but not only that, but that brings up a great point about this movie. Like, a, like in, in me and Chad, I think, fall into the same category that Grace's cousins fall into. Like, we were guys <laughs> in the 90s. I feel like Grace's cousins. Like, we were, <laughs> we were young growing up, and this, like, gigantic ridiculous sci-fi movie came out that makes no sense called starship troopers it was on fx like three times a week and it was on like like i we, i know that we didn't have hbo growing up i think we we either had showtime or cinemax but it was on one of those a lot too yeah and uh so you actually saw the full version yeah with like i with, saw the with, censored version with the weird. nudity and the graphic violence yeah i saw the version that was kind of violent no nudity and you know what they took out the psychic part and 10 year old me was like was you? all about it well i mean like you can't well yeah <laughs> damn yeah it was it wow. was all about it i mean well you just watch you just watch what's on the on the channels as long as there's not like a nudity scene happening when your your you're parents fine. are walking yeah. through the room you're it's fine. just like oh yeah it's just a sci-fi movie about war you know big bugs and big stuff. deal big bugs Big deal. Who like 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 my mom isn't gonna be the kind of person who asks who the director was. Oh, the guy that made RoboCop. No, you're not watching that. I don't think anyone's mm. mom's like that. Yeah, Paul yeah. Paul Verhoeven, by <laughs> the way, who's awesome. Yeah, lots yeah. of good stuff. Total Recall as well. Yeah, I I God, I I could go for a good Paul Verhoeven movie nowadays. Uh, yeah, man. What was the, what was the last movie was he it made? Basic Instinct. Two? He did Basic Instinct. I think he did. Dang, is that right? You he, the he did. Now. He did True Lies. That. No, James Cameron did True Lies. Well, oh no, no, never mind. That's that's you, the that's the more like this. Section. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. you know what? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not like that. I think I had to be failed a little bit. On yeah, I was one. gonna, I was gonna say, but those those that's, are totally just very different. Just calling it in more like these guys at IMDb. Hey, you get what you pay for, folks. I guess so, so we've got this movie made about um based on a book, right? Based on a book. I had never read the book. Book by Robert Heinlein of the same name, Starship Troopers. And Sam, you've 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 actually read this book. It's been a couple of years, but yes, I did read the book. I, I uh, give us your the most thoughtful and you know 
erudite analysis you can come up with. Well, well, I, I, I felt the need to read the book because I had heard that it was so drastically different from the movie, but not in the way that you would think. Like, it's not that the movie is a bad adaptation of the book. It's that, like, Paul Verhoeven, seriously, like... Like, I can't imagine that this is the guy who Robert Heinlein would want to direct the book Starship Troopers. Robert Heinlein is very much like a pro-autocracy, pro-military, like, fan of the military-industrial complex. Like, just, like, all of that stuff, he's, he's all for it. And the movie Starship Troopers is a satire of all of those things. It makes fun of everything that the book tries to, tries to, to in a way, like, like, preach for. But it portrays things from the book pretty accurately. Uh, to a degree, like yeah. I mean, um, like a lot of the big bug action sequences are definitely just Paul yeah, Verhoeven right. throwing throwing an action sequence in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the the power dynamic with Rico's roughnecks, and even the line like like Come on, you want to live forever? Like that's uh, that's taken from the book, but it's much more positive from in the book. It's mm-hmm. it's like it's like there's something noble and dignified in you're that. gonna you're gonna live forever because your heroic deeds will live on. And and help and like like uh, I think even uh, it was Neil Patrick Harris's character that says this is for the species and, and you know like like and sure there's there's merit to that but like at at what end at what cost and this movie is not kind towards human life at all nope the body count is ridiculous uh, yeah I think Grace what was it you said about this so we we recently you know, watched Akira all as a group and uh, you guys <laughs> did a cast with Aaron on Akira. And so like, we've all recently watched Akira and kind of, the, he's the that. resident Akira expert. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah, he definitely is. We, and then, we were all there. Like all of us. Yeah. We all watched it and all of us, except for Aaron, it was our first time seeing it. So it was like a massive, like, you know, like first viewing for everyone. But what Grace, I just say well, that, what would you say? About- <laughs> There's a special part in Akira and I won't uh, talk about that, but, I guess we already talked about it. But anyways, I said that uh, Starship Troopers is like um, the white person's Akira. Because like, how does anybody survive? <laughs> at, yeah. at least if you and go... There's like one specific character also in this movie that very much... If, if, you, go into, and if, if you go into service for the Federation, because that's like, because that's a big thing in this movie, like just like... Yeah. It just throws its themes on top of you. And and it's just like, like go read the book if you've got a couple of days. It's not a terribly long book. It's about 200 pages. It's like a novella, right? Like fits in back pocket type type of book. It's a little bit bigger than that, but, okay. it's, but it's not a whole lot of book. We're not talking about like Return of the King here. Like we're not talking about Game of Thrones book seven. Like, like it's, it's a pretty quick read. And just the... Just the contrast between the way that the movie portrays the same things that the book goes over is just it, it's it's fascinating man well this is also a very brutal movie <laughs> like as since it was my first viewing and all of you guys have seen it since you were kids this is a very brutal movie so i thought i was gonna get a break from these like really intense movies in <laughs> the first like no, no, seven minutes don't do that. i see a dude split in half by a giant freaking bug who's trying to film something because of course propaganda but, and by bug you you do, it's not like a bug that you can tell it's a crazy creature with multiple, like more than four or five legs. Yeah, well, it has it has and it has crazy giant like thing. jaw beak thing. Jaw beak it, razor it, sharp. They call it. They call them arachnids. And yeah. I gotta say that, like considering uh, considering the time period, nineteen ninety seven, the early days of CGI, it actually holds up pretty well. Yeah, you would. Yeah. You didn't think it would. It's good. But between that and you the wouldn't. models they use, and the it still looks it's, to me looks like an '80s action movie. It's really not awful. The CGI yeah. is not no, awful, it looks, it looks and there's fine. there's plenty good. of movies around the same time period that are very CGI CGI oh, no, heavy that look terrible, so bad. And this movie doesn't. Yeah, um, the characters are ridiculous. They're they're uh, almost ridiculous by nature. And I'm gonna be doing this thing where I refer back to the book a lot because I just like, it's, to, yeah. it's 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 cool. hard to talk about what happens in the movie without doing it. Yeah, but like. So the movie, so the movie, the the characters in the movie, the way that they act, it's very like cardboard cutout. Like the motives are very two dimensional. Nobody's really that fleshed out. And honestly, that's true to the book. The book is very much like that. The book, the book, like the movie, doesn't think very much about human life, but in a different way. Like the movie does it in almost like a dark comedy way. Like it's trying to point something out. You know, you said two D, and I automatically thought about the the scene in the classroom where uh, John Rico and um, Denise uh, Richards. Uh, he he draws a two D picture of them like smooching. Man, one Remember? of one of you guys knows Denise Richards 
like like the character like the actor actress's name Mr. grace Richards. does one of you guys knows her name because you've been does. you've been calling her kelly too <laughs> that was all dude. That was John. Nice. That was John, and that will that will explain itself later. Yeah, but you make a good point. He's drawing this uh, cartoon, <laughs> and this movie does this early on. Um, he, whenever and like while, the main character, yeah. is, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Whenever the main character is like doing something superficial or whatever, that's when like usually some character, usually a teacher, is given like this whole backstory figure. thing, and this is where Ratchet kind of explains the world they live in. Like yeah. out of nowhere. Well, at least like, at least the his perception took over of it. Vi- the only real truth is violence. He's yeah. He's he's giving a big speech about the virtue of violence. Yeah, it's the end of the year. It's his last day of school, and he's just like, I've taught you it, but do you believe it? The yeah, yeah. Between a citizen and a civilian, because a citizen he serves and has rights. He a asks civilian the is question just there, and the response that Rico gives is is word for word from the text. Yeah. So he's it, like, okay, so you've memorized it. Do you yeah. believe it? And Rico's he's pretty like, dumb. Like at first, I thought he was. Well, Rico's smart. really dumb at the beginning of this movie. Well, he is. Uh, he makes just, bad at decisions. Just the beginning. He is. At just the beginning. Yeah, he gets. Well, I mean, towards oh. towards the end, he's more competent. Yeah. He's a more competent soldier, but like. He's not a good person. He just found a thing that he's good at until he dies, and he's also okay with dying. Yep. Yeah. And but because the, that's the society that he lives in. How does anybody survive? But as a first time viewer, <sighs> a like lot of people s- don't. That's the answer to that question. Anyways. Well, as a first time viewer, you see him for the first time in the classroom and he answers that question verbatim what is in the text. And the teacher's like, Oh, that's word for word in the text. But do you believe it? And that's a whole propaganda thing in itself because he's not just questioning the fact that he it can recite knowledge. It pushes itself on Yeah, he's here. like, but is it internalized? Do you really believe it? But I thought, okay, this guy must be a genius because he's like acing it in his class. And then five seconds later, they're all getting their math scores. And like uh, Denise gets like a 95 percent something 97 yeah. 97 almost a perfect score. because she wants to be a pilot and they always check, be a pilot they always check math scores first you know and someone else gets some kind of good score was it is it neil patrick harris yeah neil patrick harris is a like kind of borderline genius and they they kind of hint at the possibility of him being at least clairvoyant if not psychic yeah yeah something like they that. kind of play psychic with this whole thing he He's can convince animals to do stuff because of the ferret interaction yeah yeah, that's uh, yeah, Neil Patrick Harris. He's got a certain level of psychiatric. They, they he, there's one line in the movie that hints that it's like the next phase of human evolution or whatever. Yeah. And there's um, an ad right on on the on the Papa TV. Yeah, the yeah. Propaganda vision. And this and movie. Like, speaking of that, this movie is ahead of its time as far as that goes. Like, oh yeah, because it's not really television. It's, it's your computer. It, it's, it's the internet. It, it's like it's like your TV and your computer is the same thing. And this was back in 1997. It was calling that stuff. And like, if you're watching something and you like what you're seeing and you want more of that kind of programming, you click here. Mm-hmm. Like, what Would you does like that sound familiar? More? Does that sound like something that we use now? Yeah, you should have taken that know. vacation, Johnny. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should have definitely you gone should've... on a vacation. I mean, your parents would still be dead, but you'd be a lot safer. And you'd probably be at least kind of so buzzed. That's, that's the kind of thing. Actually, that we... his parents and him would have been alive if they were away. Right? On... That's you're, the thing we're thrown you're... into in this movie, right? Is that he's making the decision on his own. No one's happy he's doing it because he's making the decision for the wrong reason. And he's definitely just doing it because he wants to get in 90s hottie Denise Richards pants. <laughs> yeah. Like like yeah. He, he's like in love with her and it's like uh, his They're high school, school sweet, sweethearts. And so he wants to impress her, but meanwhile he's being chased around by Diz and she's got the hots for Johnny and John, but Johnny's with Denise she's Richards. She's got the hots so for Johnny. Whole triangle. So thing. it's this whole According weird to Neil thing. Patrick Harris, he doesn't even need to be able to like have psychic powers, he can just he can he can pick he up can what tell. she's putting down. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they it goes Loud through the whole clear. last day of school, like fucking. There's a big finals, dance. a big dance, a weird football game where people jump a lot. But it's like, but it's a court. Yeah, it's like a basketball court, and and, and, and it's like a half of a field. I'm not really sure what's going and on. And everyone can jump twelve feet in the air a lot. Maybe yeah. our protagonist, but like it's yeah. weird. It's what people weird. Yeah, do. Mostly Johnny Rico. Yeah. And also the uh, um, hit the character that acts to his chagrin, uh, oftentimes Xander oh, Bar- Barkalo. Oh, yeah, the this other is, guy. His name is Xander. In portrayed the movie. by Patrick Muldoon. Xander. Yes, but as oh, as Xander. reference oh, later, saved by the Bell fame. Yeah, exactly. Me and John were talking about like you know making much cracks about how he's going to still. Yeah, you know, we he's, heard he, you. He stole Kelly Kapowski's. Uh, he stole you know Zach Morris's girlfriend once. He's might as well still like Johnny Rico's girlfriend again because that's all that guy's good at. 
Just stealing ladies. He's, so is this, he's just typecast as hot ladies yeah, stealing. Yeah, exactly. Is this just Saved by the Bell, but in space with mega bugs? That's, sure. That, that, is, a, that <laughs> is a part of it, yes. <laughs> hey, 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 what is going Grace, on here with all these bugs? <laughs> Grace gets it. No. <laughs> Grace gets it. She kind of does. That's what it is. Paul Verhoeven made a, made a movie that is guised like a Beverly Hills 90210 fucking in Saved space. by the Bell. Yeah. With mega bugs. With, in space with mega bugs, kind of Michael Bay action epic but threw in all this like so socio-political satire well it's just because he picks young actors like casper van deem and like wait van deem van deem van deem van deem yeah. i don't think and, like, i don't think he knows how to say his last show. name just say something He's not yeah. that bright but there's like 90s tv show people all Sorry, over the place <laughs> he just casts young people and it gets off this weird vibe even though it's not there in the plot at all it's just young people because this would this would happen to young people. Well, there's only and Sam brought this up. There's only two kinds of older people. And by older, I mean like forty plus in this movie. Like if yeah, you're like, forty like, plus, like grown ups. you're either you're either fucked up and you're missing limbs because or eyes, because you served for the federation. You're, and you're a citizen and you're a citizen, so you can vote. That's one. Yep, of the that's a thing. In your society. In the movie. That's a you part of the vote. society. Or yeah. you're kind of like um, his uh, uh, Johnny Rico's parents, who are kind of like. Some kind of upper class, like elite yeah, they're they're well to do. They got money persona, but they're obviously very comfortable. They've never seen combat. They've never had to go fight the bugs. They have like an awesome house. There's a grand piano in their like living room area. And, they and can afford intergalactic vacations to for their Zegama son Beach. Yeah, to congratulate Beach. him for finishing and, his propaganda yeah. school. And they do not like the idea of him going into the military. They're like this or the federal working for the Federation. Uh, mobile infantry. Yeah, specifically. Well, specifically. that's well. It's not that like it's not that by joining the military you end up in the infantry. It's like they place you somewhere, and that's where he ended up well that's also what you shot for the go oh, i don't think chance. so mister you're going to harvard yeah and they're gonna pay for it and that's the end of that no dad fuck you i don't want to go join the military. i don't want your life <laughs> so he joins the infantry and this, is, this is also supports my theory that this guy is pretty dumb he's like all right so i got this girl i slept with her once the night of whatever the dance, the, the final the, senior the, dance, the so dance I'm in slash love. finals I'm, I'm in love. slash last lecture slash big game. So she's joining the military. It was all the it was all the things. It was all the all the tropes. All all the tropes. She's she's leaving. She has a dream to become a pilot. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna join the military. Does that mean you're gonna be with her, right next to her, training next to her, no, doing missions next to her, I defeating mean, the no. enemy no. next to her, no. so you bond in a way that is above normal people? No. But you know what no. it means? It means that she's gonna get to see him in a uniform for like 15 minutes before yeah. they separate. For ye- I don't know. Well, it's not yeah. years, but but it's how a few but months. how good is but how good am I gonna look in that uniform? Standing, so good, standing right there. Looking all proud for you with my medals and my badges. Sparkles coming right off those badges. That's, that's, you know, that's what he's thinking. That's why we should have called him Sparkles. But yeah, so that's why he joined the Sparkles. <laughs> That's why you joined the military to sparkle his badges. I know, but he's so dumb. He could have been just like getting oh. it with Diz the whole time. Just mm, also, idiot. also idiot. Diz joins, but you don't see that till yeah. later. Yeah, that happens. You later. don't see that till the first day of boot. So I wonder what the hell she's been doing this whole time. But then you get to boot. Boot camp. Yeah, and we see we see more adults who who served for the Federation, and they are also missing missing limbs. Yeah, and they're, they're, if if they're not missing limbs, then they're kind of like. Drill instructors who are just kind of—they're let's just put this—they're yeah. really good at being drill instructors. Oh yeah, uh, who is the guy that yeah, Clancy Brown, dude? Clancy, Mr. Clancy, Krabs. I love Clancy Brown, Mr. Like, Krabs, Sergeant dude. Zim. Like that's is one he of the guy that he's just like, Highlander. That was a drill instructor. He just yeah. fucking breaks the guy's arm like first day. Of yeah, class. it's like who yeah, thinks, like, who who thinks they could put me on the floor? Who okay. thinks they can do it? Yeah. I, I, I guess I might could. It's like yeah. all right, come give it a shot. You sound confident. And the guy, and I'm thinking, okay. The guy's, cl- you know, clearly the sergeant has something up his sleeve. He's probably just going to take the kid down and be like, you got You guys have a lot to learn here in boot camp. You can't just take someone down until you know everything. You hear me? But no, he doesn't he, do that. He breaks his he, arm. He, yeah, like he snaps bends the his joint. arm in a way that it doesn't go. Oh, uh, yeah. That's okay. You know Medic. What? Medic. 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 That's fine. Medic takes care of everything. Oh, first, that would be a good drinking game for this first movie. Time, oh, yeah, it yeah, would. First it time would. every yeah, time you Medic is screaming in this movie. Medic. It, it, it'd take a minute before you start drinking, but once you start drinking. You are drinking. <laughs> and that arm looked messed up. Luckily, they have 
You're Great sleeping through the third medicine. act. Yeah. Future science They medicine. got blueberry Kool-Aid in future a cast. Future science medicine. Future science medicine. Guys. Gonna fix your arm. It's looking like spaghetti. Guys, what are we, we talked about this thing on the show earlier. Yeah, we talked about it, but we didn't all agree what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sign anything. But we were, sorry, we were also saying how the main character was not the smartest, the brightest tool, in the, sh- the sharpest tool in the shed. What, Johnny Rico? But... Doesn't he kind of remind you of Captain um, Planet? Not Captain. <laughs> yeah. No, in Futurama. Uh, what's his name again? Oh, Captain oh, Brannigan. Oh, Cap- Zach Brannigan. Yeah, he Zach kind Zach of Brannigan. reminds Hello. me of Zach. Zach, Zach Brannigan. Oh, we're all gonna have to do a Brannigan impression yeah. now. Just I'm gonna of- do the whole podcast like that. <laughs> Oh, well, if you're going to do your podcast like that, then I'm just going to have to one-up you by doing my podcast like this. <laughs> Brannigan's Law is like Brannigan's Love. Hard and fast. <laughs> okay, everybody gets one. I actually thought the uh, Busey descendant was more Zap Brannigan-ish in a certain way. I like, think so. Look. You mean Jake mm-hmm. Busey? We haven't mentioned the fact there's a Busey sp- Progeny. All over this movie. Right, There's Busey right. all over this movie. Yeah, John. Busey's all over this movie. He, he, it's not full tilt Busey. Full tilt it's, Busey. It's, That's it's I would I would Busey. watch that I would watch that comedy special. <laughs> full tilt Busey. Hey everyone. Sorry. <laughs> got my son Jake here and uh he's Do you ever <laughs> notice that when you go to the grocery store and you got your pants down, everybody looks at you like you got your pants down. <laughs> but John walks into the room and he sits he sits down. <laughs> And like the first scene with Jake Busey, he's just like, "Is that a Busey?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like he yeah, he didn't say he anything. See it. He, he just cracks one smile and he just oh, he, that smile get, is crazy. You get a look at the teeth, and it's just like, "Oh, that's a Busey. That's a Busey." <laughs> mm-hmm. And he gets a he gets a straight up knife through the hand. Oh yeah, because he's that's smack it. talking. Well, at this point, so like this, it's well, first day of boot. It's Diz, his own fault, you know, because he sucks at throwing a knife at a target. Yeah, he's bad at it. And then he's like, hey, what's the point, Sarge? Like, we're just blowing up bugs with nukes. All it takes is pushing a button. Oh. Why do I even know how to use knives? This is, I love this Sorry, scene. That's an honor that was, uh, that was That was Bob Dylan as a guest, <laughs> as a guest commentator. Because you always want to see how Bob Dylan goes to boot camp to fight bugs. I'm glad he, uh, he's gone now, but I'm glad that he was able to stop by to commentate on that really one nice particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was, I, I feel honored. That was amazing. Nobel, Nobel laureate, Bob Dylan. Yeah. So anyhow. When he feels like it. <laughs> After what Bob Dylan said transpired, then the Sarge is like, "Put your hand against the wall." He, he kind of like and he's like that, hesitant. Well, I, I love that. He, I love that he, he kind of he steps away from the target range, and, and I'm sure that this was like blocking that went down. Yeah, like you know, I'm sure that, that that Paul like had him direct. this like, "Hey Jake, I want you to come over here and stand next because we want this wall in the background." But that's but that's what he does. He like sidesteps over, and now we see the wall in the background. It's kind of like foreshadowing in a way. It's like. It's like he just kind of stands over there's like he's, he's like the wall right behind him and he's just like I, I arms just, I don't, cross. I don't see what the point of it is and he's just like go stand up against that wall put your hand flat against the wall. Hey, he I don't do really. It right away. I he, said go and do it. I yeah, bet you he, could suck a golf ball through a foot <laughs> guard hose. <laughs> oh shit! No, seriously, That's like we, we were we were talking about how much of a badass this drill instructor was. Oh yeah, and. Top. uh Two badass drill instructors I could think of. Is it, is Wait, like, top like, three. I forgot Major Payne. Like he's he's one, he's a <laughs> he's the kind of yeah. Shout out to the Waynes. Yeah, uh, right. sh- he's the he's the kind of drill instructor that you know, like when he's drinking his coffee in the morning, he puts he puts the powdered remains of Arlie Ermey in his coffee. <laughs> There's Wait, that. That's the only way to make a cup of coffee, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I don't see what the point of throwing knives. Is. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> get the hell, Dylan. Get out of my studio. That, that actually that, that's that's. <laughs> That sounds that sounds like one that Get sounds out of here, like Dylan. a song. I don't need you anymore. With the poor through nasty. <laughs> so anyhow, he puts his hand against the wall. And uh and uh Clancy, old man Clancy, uh pulls uh, a knife out of a target. It's my best tip to hit the dog. <laughs> Damn it, Dylan, get out of here. <laughs> and close the door. I am so sick of you. And your platinum selling Christmas album. Get the fuck to just, just get the hell get out, out of here. You get go. There. Get out of here. There. God, hopefully he get stays out, out. Jesus. I just I hope he remembers how to get home. Just This was your fault for feeding him in the now, first place. Now, I, now. Oh no, hold on. Let's break this down. Because I love this scene. So he's like, put your hand against that wall. And then Busey doesn't do it. And he's like, put your hand against that wall. Yeah. And he does it and he he Hesitantly. pulls the knife out of the target, flips in his hand, chucks it, 
dead center of Busey's right hand, stuck in the wall, and everyone's just staring at it. And Clancy, old Z- Sergeant Zim is his name in the movie, just kind of starts sawing over and says, the enemy cannot push a button. If, if you, you disable, disable his, his hand. hand. <laughs> just like straight drill sergeant and then pulls it out. But you know, medic. Medic. So this is, this is just one of the many just the horrors of boot camp is, is what this whole sequence What's is about. What's great is that even though boot camp was horrific and like really ground them into like hardened soldiers, it was not near enough to get them ready for the horrors they had to face. Oh, <laughs> not even no. like a little bit, man. Not even a tiny bit. We just think it's kind of like, like, well, this movie's like kind of pushing it. But there's, a but, bit. but there's, but there's a lot of good stuff from this whole boot camp oh, it's still sequence. Dense. And, and, and it's, it's, it's very yeah. much like, like you know, I made, I made the early Ermy joke earlier. Like, but there is a lot of there is a, there's there's clear influence from Stanley Kubrick's uh, oh, full, full Metal Jacket yeah. in the sequence, like. How can you make a boot camp sequence after that movie and not be influenced by it? But, but the, there there is that in here. But it's not it's not all it's not all that. There's there's plenty of bad things that happen at boot camp, like a knife in the hand, like yeah. breaking Broken the dude's arms. arm. A uh, Diz gets choked <clears throat> out in like the first. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah, that's, 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 well, that's when She's she shows the next up. One after the guy gets his arm, she fucked shows up. up as a transfer and is like, I th- "Well, let me get, let me take a shot at it." And she actually gets a couple shots in on him before yeah. she before he flips her over and he like her out. No, he, knee, she, knee he to the throat. The leg, dude. Sweep, yeah, he sweep, sweeps the sweeps leg. The leg yeah. Knee to the throat. Next scene we see Diz and she's got a bruised neck. It's like I appreciated that continuity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And brutal. It's at the uh it's at the mess hall the next day. Yeah. Or whenever. Cuz you cause we, all, get, we get plenty of that too. We get a lot of the, the you 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 figure out who these people are like right away. So Rico's like the golden boy and he's just trying to keep his head down. Busey is well, like with that jaw the line, I mean dude. like who else is going to be the golden boy? He's obviously who should be in charge. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, well, no, B- it's B- a jaw you can trust. Jake Busey tries to like flash him a smile to yeah. to assert dominance, but that jawline's just and too much for his teeth. Still, is still doing this stuff and trying to hook up with Johnny. But he's and still then, with and Carmen. And then there's the there's the farmer who got his leg broken, who's kind of the strong man. Yeah, he's just kind of like he's nice kind of guy, the strongest guy. guy but yeah, but he's just like uh, you know, he's not that smart. And that I guess they the grow big scene. and dumb down on the farm, huh? That huh, boys? To- well, that gets to their training sequences, which the first one, the they're going against each other in teams with like little lasers. Yeah, it's like, like the, it's basically it's, enhanced laser tag. And, and, they, and, and, this, and they, this if was, you shoot them, it's like laser tag, but when you get hit, you're stunned. But yeah, like, it stuns you. I mean, it was it was it was, it was the nineties. They could have just rented out a, a, like an outdoor Qzar for. A, oh yeah. Oh, good reference. Yeah, man, oh, that's, that's, a that's a deep cut. Deep cut. That's that's a deep cut right there. So yeah. anyhow, they're playing laser tag Qzar. And then they decide to up it because uh, and and during the first round of laser tag, I'm kind of breezing through this, but um, during the first round, it kind of asserts that Johnny Rico's got some skills. He's got some skizzles. He's doing flips, flipping over people, yeah, shooting he's taking people. people out. But they're well, down. He's, and he's double. Didn't he double? He's, he double. He he. Edward Uzi hands that he, laser tag man. He picks up two guns and fucking takes out people. Well, he he just pretends that it's that he that it's that it's the the football court. Yeah, the, the football court. And they were on a they were on a court. It wasn't you know a field. What? Let's call it quantum ball. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. Quantum ball. So there are two horrible things that happened in training. It's when he when Johnny Rico had a squad of his own to go through training. They were playing laser tag, but with real lasers this time. And he had a squad mate who's Helmet it's the big dumb Bell farm boy. Yeah, they're giving the, the troopers are giving it's, live it's ammunition. Private, private it's their first. File. It's their first live ammunition yeah, thing, right. and uh, and they go and and farm boy like his helmet's messed up. Yeah, like he's, he, he's he, jumping he in keeps, front of people. He keeps getting in the way. Yeah, and, and he, like everyone's yelling at him. And then Rico's like, "Let me look at it." And they show it to him. And then this one, what uh, is your one, major malfunction, Brad? Pretty Pyle? much. And this one uh, person walks up to him, and she's like, "You're going to make us break the score. We're not going to get top score now." That's and then, Diz. And she gets hit by a laser. Diz. And she's no, the one who's trying to be a politician. It's the, oh, it's the, not, the other lady. Oh. It's the girl who's trying to be a politician. She wants to be a politician. In oh, the earlier yeah. scene with the shower scene. Where we'll get there. We'll cover the shower. the shower scene in a second. The co-ed shower scene that is like so tastefully done for, for the 90s. Yeah, but Chad, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, so she's like, you're going to ruin the score. She gets this by later. She goes down. Her gun goes off by accident, which this is fiction. That doesn't ever happen. It hits Farm Boy in the head because he's not wearing his helmet. And just splatters everywhere. And of and course, Rico yells for the medic. Medic! It's like, what's the medic gonna do? Right? What's the medic? medic? As you hear off the medic, screen. The medic's gonna run up, just, just take a look and be like, yeah, he's well, dead. Well, he's dead. He's he did. Dead I, t- I, I tell you, he did. 
And then Woo. you hear off screen, uh, 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 Clancy Zim was like, uh, Rico, you're relieved the squad command. Because he had made... At this point, things were kind of up or down for Rico. Rico, god damn it, Squad Command is going to have my ass on this one. Pretty much. Like, Rico, is, he's like, he became squad leader, but also Carmen broke up with him while he's at boot. Yeah. And Diz is still up and in he, his business. And, and he's, he's he made his own, like, they did the, like, like we, we called it the Civil War letter. Where oh, they yeah, get just someone walking around like playing violin and, and like, it's Jake like, Busey. Apparently, Jake Busey is a violin player. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who no, would have thought? No. So yeah, like it's it's kind of like a Civil War letter, and like they're coming through the they're going through the the, the barracks area, where, like the, the the common sleeping quarters and all that. Yeah. And it's like a little common chilling area, and they're just they're like he he's trying to he's trying to talk to Carmen and say hey like he's having a good time he's doing fine he's learning a lot he's got great friends around him and everybody's like going crazy somebody's like mooning his his camera and they're all like just cheering him on like like egging him on giving him a hard time it's fun yeah it's like it's, mobile imagery is fun yeah exactly it's something that you would expect to see uh for for that type of sequence um but then the response that we get from her whenever we do get one is like it starts off with like she's setting up a camera in a room or whatever and she's just like hey i'm having a great time at the pilot training and la di da because all of my framing is like i'm a dream girl and just <laughs> by the way i'm in space <laughs> like that's, that's thing. she's and, on a starship in space and so that's how she's portrayed and, it, yeah. and 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 really we get more of the other side than we do of her for this situation and this the other side is whoa rigo you don't deserve that referring to Denise Richards, because Denise Richards is, is a legit snack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even though she's being filmed in that dream girl style that John hates, he kept saying that while we were recording. He's like, God, I freaking hate the way they're filming her. Every time they showed her face. And but, every time he said it, in, I was That like, was intentional. These characters are cardboard yeah. cutouts. Even, <laughs> even in the book, they're cardboard cutouts. It's just this feminine smile that you're just like, that's not how it works. But even in the book, they're cardboard cutouts. I kind of think that was one of the points of uh, of of Paul Verhoeven by making the movie, like, or by portraying them in such a way in the movie is like, yeah, Johnny, you join for the wrong reasons. Like in the book, it's just kind of like it's noble and it's dignified. And, and, and with this, it's like, no, it's stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. You, you're dumb, Johnny. You're dumb. Also, this girl, your girl, the pilot, she dumb. And you're all dumb. This the is Federation, you. the Federation, dumb. You shouldn't <laughs> trust the Federation. Super dumb. <laughs> you shouldn't work for them. They dumb. They gonna get you killed. Your parents is right. <laughs> they were, and but they're dead too. <laughs> we're gonna get there. <laughs> but you know what? They wouldn't be if it wasn't for Carbon Ibanez. <laughs> oh, oh. Damn it! Are you getting to the breakup letter, right? Yeah, this yeah, is the it's the breakup, breakup letter. letter. Where she calls him and tells him she's going career. Look at it. It's beautiful. I'm in space right now, Johnny. I'm going you career. You see that? You see that behind me? I'm in space. Space, baby. Look at this view because you're not going to get it again. And then she breaks <laughs> up with him because she's like, uh, career stuff. Also this other dude, but I also wanna, career I, stuff. I, I want to I wanna run my later. own fleet because I'm totally the type of person that the military would just let do that. Yeah, because here's the deal. Okay, here's my thing. She's portrayed as being a crazy good pilot in the movie. And at she best... She's nuts. She's she not. At not. best, she's good at almost missing things. In I'm fact, sorry. In she, fact, at best, does, does at anybody, worst, people die she, a lot. She, does anyone have the checklist? Because she is not. <laughs> no. She, she no. is a troublemaker. She's she a does. troublemaker. Not only that, she, she, she plays by her own set of rules. She She's plays by her own like rules. Crashing into stuff or acting like she almost crashed into stuff. Like she makes a big deal when she gets on, flies her first. Let, for lack of a better term, I'm calling it a star destroyer. I don't know what else to call it. Submarine in space sounds weird. I'm calling it a star destroyer. How dare for posterity. you? It's just easier. Sarah. I don't yeah, know another word. Because at this you point, don't at, know. at this point, because the, the movie, I do not. The movie starts off with like that propaganda footage of like the the we, we're seeing we're seeing the camera on the planet like it's the planet K something like that like I, Dathu, in the arachnid yeah. quarantine zone and, and they and and, they, and somehow they, they throw call asteroids planet K for you know, short at like, some like bugs like but, that's, but that's where the movie starts off is they're on that planet and there's infantry rolling through and they have somebody reporting from the field and then that guy gets ripped in half and there's some horrific bug violence it's really messed up and it gets really intense right away and then it goes from that to 90210 high school drama and then it follows through boot camp 
And then we get the breakup letter where we see her in space and it goes to her in space in pilot school. And that's the first time we really go to space. Since and she's there with the, Saved by the, the Bellboy. The opening. It is starting. He's her, he's her like training officer, right? Like he's like, she, she gets. When he's she's, not managing the max. Yeah. Patrick Muldoon, Xander Bar- exactly Barkalo. That's what I'm saying. God, that's a, that's a hell of a name. Yeah. Well, he's pulling a hell of a move on your lady. That's what you should know. On Carmen yeah, too. Yeah. John's term, Kelly. I'm Ooh. sure that she'll, well, he moves I'm sure like, she'll look handsome in a uniform. I don't appreciate it. Probably even moved harder. Than Kelly, you know. I don't know. It's in space, so the he made gravity, himself. Yeah. He made him. By the way, this is Saved obviously Saved by the Bell in space. <laughs> <laughs> they did that screech. I remember that. Screech did that. Don't you remember screech on the moon? By the way, this is definitely pre like Me Too, Me Too movement and Harvey Weinstein because he makes himself her commanding officer. Yeah, and she's yep. charmed by it. Yeah, she's like, oh, which is not how it would go it over me at all. No, that's creepy. It's creepy Weird. as hell. If you are into a girl, do not make yourself her boss. Yeah, like that's so, just a word so, of advice for those. So listening. he sets it up. She flies a little crazy. He's like, "Well, don't, don't mess up too much, because then I'm screwed." They're on third watch. I'm just here to try and screw you. <laughs> so they're on the late watch, right? And uh, they they're too busy flirting to realize this giant potato in space. <laughs> Fly uh, towards them. Uh, they try to outmaneuver it, and they only by lose that they mean don't because don't. they only because lose that's, part of the ship because that is the real threat. There's an alien force that has figured out figured out how to enlarge potatoes and project them towards the Earth. <laughs> My exactly. God, it's worse they, than I've ever feared. They have perfected the potato launchers. It's unreal. By the way, that was the first time we didn't it's, have Denise it's Richards. The, it's the perfect potato projectile. Right. For bugs. I mean, so, for humans. So she, <laughs> she dodges the potato in space. She only kind of gets hit, and they lose, like, Just a few thousand people. A few thousand people. And, and then, they're like, we can't communicate back to Earth because she sucks at fucking driving. <laughs> And then they and then they, they give her the they, they they give her an award for the damage not being worse than it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how did that a, happen, dude? For such a strict militaristic society, they're really just handing Lose out well, well, here's, 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 the you you here's the thing. If you did your best, bud. Here's the thing. You did your best, bud. I know what you're thinking, but I, I I can explain all of it away if you just listen to me for a second. I can explain See, all of it. The, that's the that's and the, it's and it's all gonna make sense if you just hear what I have to say. It will all make sense. Attractive people have better lives. Because <laughs> they can get wow. away with more, uh, more shit, uh, I feel like. That's true. That's good. My life sucks. We found <laughs> the moral of the movie. <laughs> hey, no, the, no, you say that, but like only once or twice in the movie, like as the movie went on, Asher was like, well, hey, an ugly person. Yeah, dude, no. <laughs> we started out with all beautiful people in high school. There was a there that, was finally one and ugly then a person. lot of them die off and you and start you seeing like ugly average looking people. It was like damn. <laughs> start to show up. I and mean, it's like you look ugly compared to what I'm used to in this movie. We fed the pretty people. <laughs> but I've been through a lot in 2 hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get out of here, Bradley Cooper. You're like a 7 here. No. No, they were. They were they were like the- superhumans and then they all got eaten. They didn't get eaten because we've already covered this. No, the this. bugs the bugs just, don't the, eat they, they just rip people apart. They just, kill them. they just rip them apart just It'd be like so if we violently. saw a burger and we just ripped it apart and we're like, "Man, I'm done with you." <laughs> Showed you. You're all over the place now. Hey. That's what the bugs do to people. So clearly they don't need them for food. So our fantastic driver totally messes up and hits the ship where it kills communications. So they can't say the giant potato is flowing towards Earth. They never warned Earth. They Those couldn't warn Earth. They came from, but they did establish it came from Klandathu. Yes. From the Arachnid quarantine. You're zone. telling me Bug Planet. that they have they have a space patrol in this world. A space force, if you will. A space force. A space force. The Federation that you have to be a citizen in order to vote and you have to have a license to have children and you have a better shot of getting a license if you're a citizen has a space force. Wait, 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 what am I talking about again? <laughs> wait, wait. But I, I just had a weird thought experiment. So, so, so you have to be a citizen to have a child, to a license to have a child. Well, no, no, I was making a point about fascism and then I just oh, lost I the grander point. It's easier to get a license if, okay. you, if you have, have children if you have 
yeah, child. You, yeah, but you, you can or, be a civilian. Be a politician, you definitely have to be. A and, and a passing line in the in the scene where they're showering, um, one of the one of the female characters says like like because one of the one of the male remember, characters yeah. is like like so uh, what made you join? Let's keep it going. Hey, pass it around. What made you join? Mm-hmm. And I don't think this guy ever said, "Well, he joined, motherfucker." But so it gets to one of the one of the girls. Writer, that guy, yeah, he said, "I'm a writer." Blah blah blah. Yeah, well, somebody well, paid paid story. attention. But so, like, right. like one of the girls uh, says that she wants to have babies, mm-hmm. but she had, but you have to have a license. And it's easier if you're a citizen. And it's easier if you're a citizen. So, like, we 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 find out we find out an awful lot about the. But it's always distracted by like either either something silly happening, a joke happening, or or nudity. That's, that's just yeah. it. Like yeah. the movie, every serious thing in the movie that's that feeds you how weird yeah. the society is. It's all the, nuanced, like just yeah. subtle drips. Yeah, while while it's like slathered, covered, chunked by like just either Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero type like high school drama or nudity. I want to go or to Waffle nudity, House now. or a sci-fi action <laughs> sequence or some boot camp shit. Yeah, some crazy stuff. Well, so that's why, like, I think as we were kids, we were just like action, nudity, boobs, boobs, boobs yeah. and butts. Yeah, that's that's one of the points I was trying to make earlier. Is like we watched it when we were younger, and that's what we got out of it. Yeah, just a crazy weird movie that was on at four o'clock in the afternoon. But now that you're old enough to understand what movies like RoboCop are about, yeah, and like it's, you can you can watch this and be like, oh, this movie's saying some shit. It's saying a whole lot of shit about a whole lot of shit. A whole lot of shit. I think we should uh we should get to when they start encountering Bug Planet. Well, so well, what happens was is Johnny Johnny he gets the, the breakup letter. He gets the breakup letter. He gets the breakup guy, letter. Guy dies, guy dies on his watch. He loses command of a squad. And he's he like, gets I'm a public, quitting the he gets, military. He gets a public lashing. He gets ten lashes. He gets yeah. a public lashing, and he, he and signs I, the I form and, to resign. And I don't know how best to mention it, but there's a there's something that I definitely noticed watching it just now that I didn't notice oh, yeah, whenever I was a kid. Scene. The whipping sequence. Mm-hmm. You you were observing that there was a black guy that was whipping Johnny Rico, and that was very and Johnny different. Rico was white as fuck. So that was He's very Aryan different to too. see. see the, yeah, yeah, it's like, was that an intentional call? Did you did Probably, you want yeah. that to happen? I thought that was really cool about the movie, though. And also being an Asian well, well, person. Well, yeah, for sure. There are lots of different Asians there. There are lots of different races, like, represented. It's really, ethnicities there, represented. Yeah, there were. The bubble infantry is like, because it's a... It's a global federation. It's people from all over. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that's what it is. Join and uh, they come speak citizens. English. Yeah, because like, these people they live in Buenos Aires in Argentina. Yeah, the original the original kids from high school. Yeah, yeah. they're Argentinian. Yeah, and that's just the world they live in. Yeah. It's just and it's I, all. Federation. I felt like it's the all Americanized. Federation was very egalitarian and like and and down to like the 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 shower scene. It's like very. It was a very neutral situation. You were saying that nothing like mischievous yeah. or like it's immature a co-ed shower sequence and nobody makes a comment about like asses or anything like that yeah. it's just co-eds showering together and it's very matter of fact although as we, rico walks out because he's embarrassed that oh, yeah. Diz uh oh well is like but that's only because it came out that he joined the service in the first place for a girl for a girl and that's why so he's embarrassed lady, then that lady slaps him on the ass that's the yeah. closest thing to what you're describing because they're it's teasing more... him as a lover boy yeah that's, exactly it's not it, it, that's that's what it is yeah. it's more connected to that I think, specific fact i think it's because even the training is so brutal it's hard to just like have a space that's sexualized in the group because yeah, we you don't guys separate. are surviving you yeah, know we you don't guys separate. are just surviving and you have to bathe just like you have to eat you're a person that has to you survive know? all of you are people that have to survive yeah so it's a uh, it's it's pretty intense and we and we didn't we we glossed we glossed over this part but um but one of the sequences in the first in the school the school scenes is we get the science teacher as they're dis- dissecting the bugs and carmen throws up just up chucks it was one of the yeah. Whole, it plays off as a gross out scene, but the it's one of the grosser scenes like of the movie just because the she, same philosophy of the, the, the book. camera's like the camera's like a profile of Carmen whenever she's throwing up. It's like oh, I, that's very realistic and how I don't need to see that. But yeah, the science teacher going on about it. She's going on. She's going on about the superiority of insects. Mm-hmm. She's like, I know they that can, on the surface you think that insects are less than people, but they can colonize. They can uh, they they reproduce, reproduce large numbers. much faster than we do. They hurl they, their spawn into space. They don't. They well stuff like they don't sense fear. They don't mm-hmm. have egos. Yes. They they just they know what they have to do when they do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, insects are the most numerous organism on the planet. So I think she was just kind of in admiration of what they have accomplished and kind of. But that's but that's just it. Because someone like, says something snippish like, oh, so what do we care about some stupid bird? Oh, yeah. But, but, that's, know, but that's an extremist. That's an extremist, uh, an extremist view of certain like of certain like human militaristic type ideas like the author of this book, Robert Heinlein. Like he would probably agree with this teacher. Like, yeah, they are. They they do ha- they do have this much better capability because they reproduce in such great number because they don't talk back because they don't know how to not conform because they don't sense fear because yeah, they just do what they have to do they have hard fucking lives man you either like survive and you help your colony or you get ripped apart in the process and probably yeah. both it is hard yeah the social insect the authority it's figures rough. in this movie are the are the perspective of the author Oof. like think of it that way. That's yeah. that is like 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 what what she is saying. What the lieutenant, who is also the teacher in the first scene, is saying, like what these authority figures are saying, what the drill instructor is saying, these are the perspectives of Robert Heinlein. And this movie is taking those perspectives and turning them on their head and like pointing out all of their just inhumane flaws. Well. I think that'll all come together when we get to the bug planet and they start fighting some shit. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're almost so there. Basically the, all uh, the training was worthless. Yeah, so basically the uh, well, was, Johnny Rico's down and out on his luck. He's, t- he's going down Washout Lane and... He talks to his parents. Talk to his folks in Buenos Aires. And they say, come back home. Come back home. Love everything's you again. fine. We're and then they send you to Harvard. And then know. it starts, because it's a video chat. Uh, they're FaceTiming. And it starts getting dark where they're at, and they're like, "Is it rain?" And like, "In this time of year, that's weird." And then the uh, connection signal gets cut. loses. Yeah, signal just gets cut out. Johnny Rico starts walking out the door, literally like feet away from the door, and everyone training starts yelling and running towards one side of the camp. And he realizes something's going on. He goes, he sees one of his friends. He's like, "What's going on, man?" And he's war like, "War were declared." Yeah, war. <laughs> reference. I like that. Um. And they walk up and they realize minutes ago, this is how quickly the media works in this, the state-controlled media. Minutes ago, a meteorite hit Buenos Aires. At least the deaths are projected to the tens of millions. There's nothing left. It was a pretty brutal number in a very yeah, short amount of time. time. I mean, uh, Buenos and, Aires and is a heavily 100, populated 000. city. Oh, no, no, that was the that's, 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 that's the invasion. That's the, it was, that's the it military was, It was uh, 12 million. It was 8 million on the count of four and 12 million, million dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a bad. ridiculously yeah. high number. And so, like, as he's watching it, Diz walks up to him because they're both from Buenos Aires. They're like, God damn it, Johnny, the bugs got us. <laughs> oh, yeah. The bugs got us. <laughs> the bugs got they us. They wiped us out. That's home, Johnny. Johnny, that's home. Johnny, that's home. That's home, Johnny. Go get him. And so he's all pissed off. He goes back into his superior officers. All right, I'm office. back. I want to join the military again. And they're like, and this time it's personal. It's, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much what happens. He's like, I'm from Buenos Aires. I'm pissed off. And then uh, they're like, is this your signature on the resignation is- letter? I think it is. And then Hank from Breaking Bad decides to turn around and not also, do you know happening. who's been selling meth? Yeah, exactly. So basically, Hank who's is- Heisenberg? Hank is a superior officer, and he turns around while a drill instructor is like, is this your signature? Doesn't look like it to me, and tears up the paper, breaking the law, but basically allowing him to join what the do Bobo you think, Sergeant Zim? Fight the bugs. Go fight the bugs. What do you think, Sergeant Zim? Get your ass back in line, Rico. Something, something like that. Yep. Something and then, like and that. then we start to catch up with the movie, because the movie opened with that opening of the first drop of the bug planet. And this is like right before the drop. It's like D Day, but with bugs. Yeah, pretty much. Which so, is like a more intense version of D Day. Because <laughs> you're so, like, damn. Well, more here's the deal, more man. like B Day. <laughs> uh, B Day. Yeah, that's good. No, I like it. That's good. <laughs> but like, as because as they're coming in, because this is one of the first times that we kind of see like opportunity for Rico and Carmen to cross paths again. She's piloting some of one of the ships. That's in the fleet that's dropping them onto the planet. But as they're coming into the planet, like the bugs already know that they're coming in. They know that they're mm-hmm. invading. So they're shooting up these like giant blue streaks. Yeah, well, that well, are well, not just light. Well, bef- that's when the invasion starts. But right before that, Rico and his other and the other troopers are like doing what soldiers do. Like they're having fun as much as they can before the drop. They don't know when the drop is. Johnny runs into Carmen. 
And and it's the first time they see each other since they get matching tattoos. They get matching tattoos. No, 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 no. That was after. But Carmen shows up, and they talk about home like people would, and then they talk about their relationship because that's a good time to talk about relationship. Right before. before before. But what's going on with us? And then, uh, and then homeboy shows up. Freaking homeboy shows up. He goes, "Oh, I see. It didn't work out because of him." He's pretty much Rico's pretty much calling Carmen out for wanting to break out for what she did. Break up because of this guy. Yeah, pretty much. And yep. Carmen's like, no, it, this is just a coincidence. Yeah, it's just a pretty coincidence much. that he was my superior, superior officer, officer in charge of me yeah. when I decided and then, to And to then they career. get into it like they did on the football field court place. Yeah, I guess she just let them do it. Yeah, and then they decide they're going to have a fight. And Yank doesn't... Uh, I don't want to just rank. gloss over the fact that Chad just said football field court place. Well, that's what it is, man. It's a football field court place. All okay, right. what's it called? What is, what's the name uh, of the, the uh, place actually, where quantum uh, actu- balls play? Actually, I've read the book. That's what it's called in the book. Okay, yeah, exactly. We've been back to Football field court place. Football field court place. There you heard court, it, folks. Court place is one word, by the way. I dare you Let to correct you. us in the but comments section. it's spelled without a U. It's weird. <laughs> no no hyphen. So they're going to fight. Get down to the spelling? So, so, so right before the drop, everything between uh, Rico and Carmen gets more muddled up and crazy. And then the rest of the... The troopers all get matching tattoos that say "Death from Above," which is like a a paratrooper saying, you know, like like. But I guess I guess they get dropped onto planets or yeah, because they do. This is when the drop happens. They they finally have D Day for bugs. Bugs, They got to get the drop on them. Pardon me, B Day, B Day, B Day, and they get the drop on them, and their superior officer. Wait, but the the planet's K. Shouldn't it be K Day? No, no, that's ridiculous. Just Just, stop. Just fight. Could be K B Day. Oh, that's a different thing. Just fight, fight the bugs. So they get dropped on the uh, Kalandathu, which is the source of the meteorite, to take out the bugs. And the plan and it's, is It's to- also where they hold the Mortal Kombat tournaments. <laughs> when the bugs are hibernating. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's a very versatile planet. So I wanna I just wanna take a minute to just say thanks to uh, cyberpunks.com for sponsoring this episode of the Movie Night Autopsy. Yeah, man. They're really cool about that. And they really they really wanted us to like Talk about things relevant to uh, their own interests, and uh, I, I, I'm happy to be working with them a lot. They get, they got some cool content coming out, and 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 the thing about shared interests is that shared interests run the world. So we hopped onto that bandwagon, and on that bandwagon we sit to talk about Starship Troopers. Yep. Talk about bugs. Drop the bugs. Who wants to talk about dropping bugs? Who wants to, well, dropping the bomb on the bugs, which is what they should have done, but they didn't. Instead, they dropped a whole bunch of troops into the bugs, and most of them just got slaughtered. Until a brave human dropped a bomb inside a bug. Well, just because... That's, that's running for it. But just, just because, like, this movie is so unkind to human life. Yeah, it's basically... Sl- Hello, human. I'm going to slice and dice you. Well, they're, they're playing the bugs game. The whole idea is that bugs reproduce so much that they can afford to lose a significant amount of their population. The science teacher even alludes to that in her lecture. But like now, humans are kind of treating it the same way. We're going to sacrifice huge numbers of humans for the greater good of the species. And they, and they quickly realize that there's just so many more bugs. Yeah, oh, and they're outgunned and almost yeah. and, and outthought in almost every way because they're going to their turf. They're going and, to the bugs turf, and they're realizing that the bugs are thinking. The bugs but, are strategizing the deal with. Well, them. that's what happens after the D Day for bugs. It's just the plan is to go in and shoot all of them, and that doesn't work. And they start to realize that these bugs are smarter than what we thought they were. By the way, bonus uh, points to the movie for trying to explain. At least where the asteroids came from. They never explained how they were launching them towards Earth, but they did explain where they came from. There are they live in a uh, a solar system that has two stars that are binary. So there's a huge gravitational field that has a perpetual ring of asteroid belts around it because it's always ripping up the debris and the planets around it. So they live in an intense universe. Wherever these bugs came from, constant asteroids, constant weird gravity. Only the toughest things can survive. But I like to think after watching the movie for the first time, that kind of explains like wh- where they came from. Such a harsh like environment that these super mega bugs. Like, no, that... what else could survive? Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. We have a, we 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 have arthropods all over this planet and they do a lot of similar things. Thank God they're tiny. I agree. Seriously. I think it has to do with the oxygen level or something, but I don't know. I'm not smart. Well, Tell us in the comments. My bugs can only be so big. <laughs> <laughs> the cockroaches in this movie were the size of mature sea turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Wow, that was way too descriptive. That was, that was <laughs> yeah, spot on. It was like, oh, yeah, that's why they're so peaceful. I have an urge yeah. to stomp right now. And the cockroaches are just kind of, they either move other things around, they're kind of like reconnaissance bugs. You ever notice that? They kind of sometimes go out, get information, and come back. And then, like the regular bugs, the arachnids, which look like they they're like, look, they're like yellow and black. They look like dude, I like, know what they look like, like. Yellow jackets, well, but like, they're arach- they have multiple. No, legs. they well, look my, like my praying question. mantis dinosaur size. Yeah, 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 and they yeah, will yeah, yeah. Kill you. But my but my question is like, okay, so there's like six sequels to this movie, and none of us have seen any of them. <laughs> And 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 this neither has anyone listening probably because like no one's seen those movies. It might come as a surprise <laughs> that there have been six other movies. But after. but do any of them tell the story from the bugs' perspective? <laughs> oh, empathy. Who are these monkeys showing up and oh my god, they're fucking up the place. Oh my god. Who gave them guns? Who gave them- we all know what guns are. We choose not to have them because look at what trouble they cause. Yeah. Also we're giant bugs. We're good. Mm. We're just gonna hey, run I'm out just, here in I'm mass just, numbers and try to tell them what's I'm going just on. Just saying, how many school shootings do you think that the bugs had last year? You can hear a pin drop. You can hear why I cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you should leave that in. You should, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens. Well. <laughs> I guess we're going to fight bugs after this bit gets out. Jesus. But once we're done fighting ourselves for what we cut out of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, how many school shootings? I don't know. They're bugs, man. So, they, so bug drop is They bust. eat themselves. We they don't see, need guns. We didn't see any of that. Well, that's what they, that's what that's they what do. That's what they do here. We don't know what they do there. We haven't seen the movie from their Works perspective. Be like David Attenborough. Docs to watch things eat other things. Did I say the right Attenborough? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, good. I get. I just Attenborough's. I just yeah. The Richard and David thing is. Very it's really confusing. hard to. You know how I remembered? Richard is a dick, and uh, Mr. Hammond from Jurassic Park, kind of a dick. Yeah, that's how I remember. Richard Attenborough is the actor, and David Attenborough is the documentarian. Yeah. Yep, and naturalist. That's how I figured that out. That's a that's a neat little trick for you listeners. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna and stop then, right is, now. That is a point. Whenever it goes back to the propaganda TV, that is a point that they make: is how many thousands of generations had to evolve before they got to this point. But it looks like they're strategizing against us. And this yeah. is after we see D Day, after we see like the live portrayal of what happened when we saw that beginning sequence with the guy on the field reporting to the camera and the guy at the camera is of course just like oh are you getting ripped up in front of me well of course i have to get I'm that just footage gonna get right in on i'm that. right in the of course of i gotta get that footage it's never run away so i might live another anytime may and that's even a soft maybe even no if you run. He, no he wants that footage because that footage is gonna get him some night it, crawler money it was some solid that's gonna get him some night, night crawler, crawler money. money oh god yeah I feel yeah. like Jake Gyllenhaal's breathing down the back of my neck. Oh my right god, JG! Yeah, he's just waiting for something horrible to happen to you so he can get so it anyhow, on camera. They're fighting giant bugs again because that's what people do in this. And universe. they lose, and everyone thinks everyone dies. It's that weird thing where Carmen's and uh, no, well, a lot of people, a lot of people do die. Well, shit, says, to the people die, especially everyone in basic, but like four people die. It, it says one hundred thousand in the first hour die. Yeah, a total of three hundred thousand for the whole. Because they didn't know for the they whole were for the whole against. fight. Yeah. Uh, basically, Carmen types Enrico's name after the battle and sees that he's killed in action. Turns out he's fine. He's just don't a know mistake. why they're bad at reporting. Yeah, he he got recovered by some. You I know, think he's in a weird Mark Hamill tank where he sits in yeah. there for a while and he's fine as long as he has a a breathing apparatus. He's got a breathing tube. He's got a machine working to restore his leg, which yeah, was right. punctured by a by a bug uh-huh. gore thing. So like, and then Diz and Baby Busey come by. And say, hey, they put on a piece of paper. They're like, look, you were killed in action. That's funny because we're infantry and stuff. Baby <laughs> Busey. Baby Busey. And they're Dark like, jokes. you got three days, man. We'll see you in three days. All right. And then Diz, in a very flirtatious way, kisses the tank. 
Because yeah, he's single now. Maybe. He's single and alive. He's got a lot going on for him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a real catch. And this yeah. crazy hot babe wants to get with him. So and This, this they, crazy hot babe's been wanting to get with him the whole movie. And yeah. He's just been turning her down. He just yeah. needs the cave. Lame. Uh, so they, basically, he's all good. And they get um, reassigned to the Roughnecks. But this is where the movie kicks in and like... You start to like root for people. It's, uh, this, so this is this, this is where the movie starts. How how Pretty how much. how far are we into the podcast Over now? An hour, and this is where the movie starts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the movie starts, <laughs> and basically they 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 uh, talk a little bit about to the other roughnecks. They meet their lieutenant. They see their orders. They kind of they're trying to figure out what's going on with like their uh, sorry the lieutenant and uh, what's going on. They, they, there's mystery and uh, uh, Baby Busey says something offhand to the new squad leader. Just like, oh, I hear Lieutenant's a real ball buster. And he, she immediately punches, punches him, him in the face. face. And he goes Please down. Die. And they're just like, he saved my life. And everyone's like, and mine, and mine. And, and mine. And then someone yells, like you, you, Officer on deck. And they all you just guys' straighten up. lives are in danger a lot. Yeah, they, they just straighten up. And you wonder who it is. And you see the back of his head. And you, you see, see a, a prosthetic arm, arm, a robot arm. And the back of a bald head, it turns around and it's Mr. Ratchek, the teacher from the first scene of the movie, that uh, really hammered in the idea of what it is to be a citizen and serving the Federation. That actor's name, by the way, is Michael, Michael Ironside. Ironside. He's in every great movie from the 80s. He is <laughs> yeah, fantastic. He is. Uh, we should give him one of those Lifetime Achievement Awards. We'll because give him an Autopsy he, Achievement Award. Yeah, you know what? I shall decree. First ever <laughs> Autopsy Achievement Award. Yep. I will give that to Mike Ryan's side. He is the shit and awesome and everything. So with it yeah, has is. been decreed, and so, so with it shall be done. Let it be written. First ever autopsy. <laughs> Achievement award. Achievement award to Michael you, Ironside 2019. You, you, you forgot what it was. Thank you for being in such badass you movies. You just said it, and then you forgot what it <laughs> forgot was. What it was. <laughs> We're talking about Starship Troopers. Give him a So break. he comes out, and he's just like, I have one rule. Yeah. Everyone fights. No one quits. You quit, I shoot you myself. Do you get me? And everyone's like, we get you, sir. Did you rehearse this beforehand? Be yes, honest. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, welcome to the Roughnecks. And then they go into like, we got a new military strategy. We're going to go back down there and shoot them. But it's going to be like after they blow them up a lot. <laughs> so it's fine. And we're gonna have like nukes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna well, by well, nuke, I mean a fancy grenade. Well, it's they they really had nuke. some nukes the last time, but they only got to use a couple of them, and then they got kind of slaughtered and shit. Yeah, and, they want to use more. Yeah, and and slaughtered. Like hundreds of thousands of people died. And well, this is one of the things I want to say. This is why I don't understand the strategy of these like uh, marines or whoever they are, the mobile infantry. They're just the infantry. Yeah, you, this the, is the army. So, they make the, this movie shits on the army, by the way. Well, this is why I don't understand. This movie is pretty much army, air force, military intelligence. So that's the military. Well, this is why yeah, I don't understand yeah. the strategy. And army is like down here. I, I I noted this in the movie. They're coming in, and like the whole strategy is we're gonna put a bunch of dudes on the ground. We have airplanes, we got spaceships, we got rockets, we got missiles, but we're gonna put dudes on the ground with their legs and their arms <laughs> holding guns. And if we get yeah, like, what, do you, we, what would you if do? If we get fifteen well, hold dudes on, hold around on. one bug, hold we should on. be able to take them down in about eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it will only take forty-five thousand bullets, but we will bring them down. And Wait, they were and like, eight "Yeah, people this firing plan is guns. fucking flawless." Yeah, it, they they grossly underestimate how many people it takes and how many bullets it takes to take down one bug. Or oh. they estimated accurately. Who thought this was a good idea? Well, they they have a they have a sequence with Neil Patrick Harris. You know, like Barney's tensing it up with a, with a gun. He's, <laughs> it, yeah, he is. <laughs> and like he blows off a limb of one of them, and he's just like, "Now you see that they're still eighty six point three percent effective. What you should do is get them right here in the cavity." <laughs> It's like yeah. the nervous. And he, and he, and he just weird. like he pulls the trigger once and fires three shots and hits it like right where he needs to and it drops. Do you think that propaganda was uh, manufactured to make it look like it's easier to kill a bug? Sure. Mm. To even trick the soldiers and to keep doing it. Do I think that that's something Paul Verhoeven might want to suggest? Absolutely. Yeah. Like this is a conversation for the end of the discussion, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff we can talk about in this universe where the propaganda. Prop mm, the, Propag pomegran the, the pomegranate the pomegranate propaganda, <laughs> <laughs> the propaganda, <laughs> and the events happening to the soldiers in the society are kind of manufactured by the Federation. 
Yeah, they possibility. Yeah, it could. I mean, they could have implanted something on that bug to make it look yeah. like it was easier to kill. I mean, I think there's bugs out there, and there's like meteors, but they're also like, who's to say that they that the Federation didn't figure out a way to throw that meteor out there and finally get this war started? Because their society functions on war; they have to have a war to make it work. Oh man, you're going deep. So like, yeah, I'm jumping, ahead. I'm jumping the gun, but I'm like, fine let's, okay, it. let's just get back to like, uh, it's 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 too deep for now. We gotta get to the end of it. But uh, they decide to go, and they spend the first day, and they start clearing out a lot of bug holes, pretty much, taking out a lot of bugs. And then there's yeah, that's, rat- that's kind of what they're doing. They're that's looking what they're, for they're, bug they're holes. mopping up. So, so rat can, check says we're mopping up, so they can shoot nukes down into the bug holes and blow out the yeah, blow, yeah, blow yeah. out all of it. Mm. Oh, then after the first day, they someone sends them like a bunch of kegs of beer. Uh, they decide to they hit and here's the entertainment. It, it, Throws a football into the crowd. A football yeah. and a violin. They decide Jake to Busey takes off with the violin. With the coolest green electric violin that I've ever mm-hmm. seen. It was, it was real neat. Through. It was nice, man. So they're, so they're having a party on the bug planet, right? And <laughs> party on the bug planet. The second scene days. that reminds us of Apocalypse <laughs> Party on the bug yeah. planet. All right. Everybody's going to be there. You should go. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, ain't no going party to like 1K, a... Going to the 2K, it's going to be all right. Ain't no party like a bug planet party, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm totally leaving all this. And this is, <laughs> and this this is when uh, this is when Diz finally like confronts Rico and says, "God damn it, Rico! I am hot. You're hot. Let's do it." I've been. Ch- I'm tired of chasing after you. You're single, and you're kind of being a dick right now. He was. Dumb. He was being like, "Do I pull rank?" Because he, he Rico just keeps falling into promotions throughout the whole movie. Yeah, he's he, like, what, what's that? A promotion I tripped over? I guess ca- I'll pick it's that It's kind of like the true he romance fa- failing upwards he thing. He fails yes. upwards. Yeah. He falls he upwards fails a lot. Upwards. He joined for the wrong reasons, and things work out fine considering. And he's, and he's got Alabama chasing him all the way to the top. He's so cool. And he so cool. and he's finally going to give in to Alabama. And at one point, even... Uh, <laughs> oh my God, that is this movie. Actually, that's it. <laughs> yeah. This is Alabama. Totally. Well, so it's just true romance and, and in space so, with megabugs. We'll and, see you next week, everybody. And yep, so, this has been Movie Night Autopsy. Boo doop boop ba doop. <laughs> boo ba doop boop ba doop. <laughs> so so rat 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 z- Jack. Rat check. Rat Jack. Rat check. Rat Jack. We got rat check. Gives Johnny's. I, Fucking shoot one of you or both, preferably if you don't. So Raz just gives gives Johnny's neck some roughing. In 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 the sense that he tells him, it's like, hey, Diz once once on your dick, so you should you should go do that. Stop being dumb. Oh yeah, he does that thing where he passes on her, and she decides to dance with Father Gabriel from Walking Dead. And Ratchet's like, you once wanted my advice. It's like that guy got so many people killed. Damn it. You want one of my advice? Here's some free advice. Don't ever pass up a good thing, dumbass. I mean, he That's doesn't. Basically what he he says. doesn't curse word Smith over it, but dumbass, dumbass. And he walks away. He decides, okay, I'm gonna stop being an idiot. I'm gonna dance with Diz before your fucking dick gets bitten Dan- off by dance. a giant bug. <laughs> he's, like, he's get gonna, it on. Dude. He, he's gonna dance with the dizzy in the pale moonlight. Have you been working on? <laughs> I've actually got a list of you. Do here. okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll read them off at the end of this. We'll just get them all out. Okay. You just gonna have to wait till then, all right? So Diz and Rico hook up. They start right. to hook up. And it's steamy. It's fun. But then an emergency and, uh, gets called emer- because bugs. Rat checks pops in. He goes, Rico, war, we got war, a bug war, alert. We got to ship out in ten. And then he's war like, were declared. War were declared. War we got, done. We're declared. We got, he's. It's a distress signal. We got to ship out in ten. Who's that in the your bunk with you? Private Flores, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like it's me, Lieutenant. And he's like, I said 10 minutes. Yeah, make it 20. Make it 20. Yeah, he gives him a solid. Yeah. Like, they're at war. And, and Diz, Diz is like, 20 minutes? He's like, oh, we can make it. We can do it. We can, they, they we can do it. They start un- unbuckling And then their they pants. immediately start going for it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. all right. Let's I do mean, it. like, you know, there's a war on. There's a distract signal. People feel like they're in danger. They need some help. But let the let the lieutenant give you that ten extra minutes because you're in it there, Johnny. Well, here's the thing: if we fast forward a little bit, well, um, he, well I think they, the lieutenant they, they could die. He knows they could die, you know. So, like, get you one. Well, I want to. I want to. I want to fast forward. Like, we, knows, like, we might all die boy. in a minute. Go ahead and get you one. Yeah, but Rico is Ratchet's like but I, the closest thing he has to his son. Probably, but I'm gonna so get my. Sense. I'm gonna get my call. Well, I mean, here. ever since he lost his penis in the Great War of, Wh- whichever the last war was. Yeah. Which I felt like it was a week before this movie started. 
in which all the all the all the men l- who are now citizens lost their penises. I'm just waiting for you guys to outbait yourselves. We just got. Well, are you guys done? That's that's the point that I'm making is that this movie is makes that kind of point that like you could have to lose your penis to be a citizen, but you get to be a citizen. I I completely agree that that's like the status quo, but I'm gonna even say I kind of took it. I think that the squad leader, the old high school teacher, I think he knew they were going into a trap. He, I just there was something about the way he acted after he got that order. Like he was not in his character to give that guy an extra ten minutes to fuck. No, dude. If he he's got not, he's unless, got work to do. Unless he, but I think it makes sense. It was in his character. If he knew this was the mission where probably everyone was gonna die, like oh, it man. wasn't random. Like it oh, was man. already set in motion. You know what's happening? Asher's hopping on that conspiracy bandwagon. No, dude, man. this movie's. Made for it. It's I'm made sorry. for it, man. It's made for it. Back then, when conspiracies and then, were fun. No, you, I got a second the, point. Dude, the, I got feder- a second the point. Federation Ooh. sent the atmosphere, man. <sighs> they fucking the asteroid, dude. There's dude, the more Federation evidence. Sent oh, it, there's man. more Hold evidence. Let him get because they jump forward after they get it on and they get to the canyon and they're, they, they go in there with basically the same fucking plan they've always had. Let's get on the ground and with a bunch of guns bugs. and our legs. And not spaceships for well, some they, reason. And well, we're they, gonna shoot them with the guns. They have to go and clean up. They have to go and clean up the the fort. Okay, so the fort's been <gasps> well. That's stress signal. It's a distress signal. They, think they have the to thing. go help people. Here's the thing. Right? The guy is walking through the canyon. The high school teacher, the Sarge, and he sees the same rocks falling down. It's the same thing that happens when the fucking Jawas take R two D two. The rocks or, always fall down from the canyon. Or or when the Ark of the Covenant is taken through the same. Exactly, yeah, exactly. The, the rocks come down, and he sees it. He sees it, and I'm thinking in my head, this seasoned soldier, he knows. Yeah. He would know immediately. He's seen a movie or two. He's he knows seen what's a movie. Going he knows what's coming on. He's lost his arm, and he's still leading them through like nothing is wrong. Because I think he's like, I know. He knows. I think he, knows. he was told because you find out. Spoilers. He knows in the movie. that the sand people scare easily, but they will return in a greater yeah. number. Yeah, I, I think he knows, and he leads them into that. That's why he gives um, Johnny Rico that extra 10 minutes, you know? And they get to the fort, and people are all fucked up, and they don't know what's going on. How do they discover it's a trap? Everyone's they they dead. walk in there, and everyone's dead. Another like, officer what? comes out, right? They right. walk in there, everyone's oh, dead. Oh, the officer. They walk, right. they walk the, in the command center. You're talking just, about General Owen. Yeah, so yeah. They, they but the general's been hiding. He's been hiding in the thing. Which is he embarrassing pops out. for the society. Like you can tell, Radchick is absurdly mad that the general of the outpost hid. Also, oh, yeah. they come across a communications officer who's but dead. he knows things. He knows things about what we're up to here. That's that was the general's excuse as to why he had to save himself. But you can tell they just are putting out with him. But also, this is very important. This is a big deal. No, like, that's that's legit. It is legit. The general but had you can to tell protect Rad- his brain because the brain bug would have taken the general's brain. I agree with that, but you can tell from the the other trooper's perspective, like he did with this guy. The other trooper's perspective, and then he made him call a distress call. I, I have two theories. So I have two things to say about that. I feel like the other trooper's perspective is this guy's a coward. I don't agree with them, but I feel like that's his perspective. Secondly, when we to talk about I the think communication that's call, the point. Yeah, exactly. Like, yes, you're yeah, brainwashed yeah. by the movie if you think that's honestly all there is to but, it. But, but, but you said the general sent the distress signal. The what, general didn't send yeah, it. Exactly. The guy with his brain sucked out. Yeah, that's the guy it. that sent it. Yeah, because yeah. the brain bug made him. So they find this dude in front of the communications desk. The general hit himself away because yeah. he knew that's what the brain bug so could do. The, general, you're saying the, the general brain bug himself. had to protect himself because he has knowledge that the brain bug can't have. That's so he, what he that's what oh, okay. he was trying to do. So, so you're saying the general hit himself after he saw the brain bug? Yes. And that was it. Yes. Okay. And they don't take him seriously because of the, till this because point. Because to them, because of their overly like overly like masculine, authoritarian, militaristic coward. society, he's a coward. Number one, number two. To this point, they haven't really they. That's that's but that's exactly like Robert Heinlein would label this guy a coward. Exactly. Paul Verhoeven is saying no. This guy was doing what had to be done. Yeah, but but also but. To, to the military. Yeah, a lot of things. To the military, they they've only talked about the idea possibly. Of a smart bug, they don't know yet. Yeah, and, and the person I, was ridiculed when she said that a bug could be smart, that a bug exactly. could strategize. They and don't that's realize the thing, that a they're, bug, they're learning that the bugs are strategizing against them, and this is how. Not only are the bugs smart, they're they're sucking out our brains. That's how they're learning our intelligence. 
And Our intelligence, and what they're, we know. They're 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 getting what they're absorbing what we know from doing that. Yeah. So there's, there's somewhere there's a, a brain bug that sucks people's brains out to gain their intelligence, which is not how memory works. And this, however, it's crazy for a sci-fi movie. Oh yeah. It's so insane. Yeah. And, and when, when they show it and they show the process later, you're like, oh, dude, I, that's crazy. I can't remember if that specifically I, was part of the book. I do know that a, I do the brain bug. Yeah, I do know that a, that a big part of the book was that the infantry is also wearing power armor. Well, I wanted, actually, quick question about that which, real fast. Which they are not in the movie. I've always heard that the the game series Halo that armor is closer to what yeah would I can be see in that. Starship Troopers because it's yeah, a I full exoskeleton of armor. You know, like I mean, I mean, it's ironic. You know, like like you know, being uh, being somewhat into into the gaming thing. Like, no, I, I have never not played a whole lot of Halo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I could see that. Definitely. Yeah, in the book, it, it covers their whole body, and it's more like a. It's like closer. A, to, it's closer to that than I would say, like more recent Fallout iterations, where it's like big, bulky, like slow armor. Like that's not. That's that's it's people, less like that. Some people they can know function. What we're talking about. It they would it would be more like what you would what what you see in yeah, Halo. They can yeah. function. They have boosters. They can uh, breathe if there's no oxygen, and there's full right. helmets covering everything. There's no exposed skin. I think I I don't know that there's like a full helmet covering. I don't remember that. I think it might still just kind of be like the football situation, like from earlier in the movie. Yeah. But it's but it is more like uh like enhanced features, like enhanced limbs and all but, that. So this is a scene where I think it like confirms that they knew it was a trap, or not that it knew it was a trap. It becomes well, this, a this trap. This is where it becomes g- like general information that oh yes we're in a oh trap. yeah we're in a trap because uh, they figure out oh the bugs wanted us to come here. They wanted the distress signal to be held, and the general starts. Saying, "Oh, it's going to be no big deal because you guys have like the like airlift coming, right?" He says something yeah, like, "Yeah, that. we, we got, got a rescue airlift. coming. We got a and rescue coming, right? It's no big deal." And uh, on the look on his face, he can see there's no rescue coming. You got a squad of mobile troopers here right now, and that's all you have. That's it, which is what the base had when it was ransacked. And then, so, so the general starts losing it because he, he realizes, knows "Oh, happen. we are." Fucked. As he starts losing it, Ratchet calls in air, calls in like a rescue. And then he tells everyone to take positions. And just as everyone's getting to positions, the camera pans up above the IKEA fence that Sam referenced. Yeah. Uh, it looks like an IKEA oh, fort. Look, it's a fort from IKEA. Exactly. And the camera runs up and they show how many bugs there are. And it's like it's a swarm. It's, it's, it's every bug. Swarm. It's like you it, can't see the ground. It's like like the way that this movie took inspiration for the boot camp scene from fucking Full Metal Jacket. Like like have you seen the trailer for World War Z? That trailer. Yeah. That trailer took inspiration from this. Yeah, I mean, it's they just pile right here. on top of each other like dead carcasses of bugs. I called it too. And then bugs. I called you did. that. They they pile on top of it, building a wall up up over the so other wall. So they, can over. Climb they climb over on the and bodies. And then just another crazy and, the, and, the, and the bugs don't feel fear. Oh, the bugs also, don't have ego. The bugs will die for their cause willingly. They don't care, and they will climb over their brethren to get to their to get to their adversary. If not planned that way, to let's every, throw enough people everything, there. everything that the science that the science teacher uh, from the from that scene in the high school, all of it, like and and they're they're a harsh. Uh, this is also the first time in the action where we start seeing flying bugs. Yeah, well, you, well, saw well, him well, in you, the you, you see them in the canyon. That's, yeah, that's the first time you see them. A guy picks up the uh, radio communication guy. And that's yeah. when. Takes him and, somewhere. Ratchek shoots the guy to, so he doesn't. Razzikurkachek. Ratchek. Yeah, he shoots him and says, "Shoots him." I, I expect any one of you to do the same for me, which is true. And then he promotes Rico. You know Rico what to do, Rico. Us. Yeah, Rico makes sergeant or something, corporal. I'll bust you down to sergeant so fast. Whatever. But Rico keeps falling upwards, and so they're in the fort, being surrounded by. Yeah, but insects. like in this in this scene of the insects, you see like four or five of these giant green insects flying and they're like cutting people's heads off. Oh yeah, it's pretty they're nasty. Diving at people. It one guy brutal, gets taken brutal. one bug is taken down, but as he gets taken down he crashes Crushes General into the General. onto Jill Owen and Jill Owen becomes a skin mark of blood. Yep. On That's the floor. It it's yep. insane. Yep. And they just keep calling for people and then eventually Yeah I guess we could just put a curse. Wait, down here's there. what they cool say. Stuff. Here's what they say. They're like, hey, we need a rescue and they're like Oh man, what are you talking about? You're on this planet. It should be cleared. It's he's clear. Like, he's like, no, it's not clear. It's, it's swarming. fucking crawling. Rico says it's swarming. Yeah, he's like, it's cr- yeah, swarming with swarming, swarming with, with bugs. bugs. We need a, someone right now. He's like, man, we don't have any pilots crazy enough to do that he's flight. Like, you better get a crazy enough pilot. 
Who could that possibly yeah, be? Yeah, who could come? Who would be crazy enough to pilot? But Kelly Kapowski too. responsible enough to get thousands of people killed who would pull off a mission like this? Wait, did you say crazy or incompetent? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll take I either. The same word. Little column A, little column B. Yeah. Crazy Carmen. So basically, rescue comes. Crazy and Carmen. This, Wait. Crazy, crazy Carmen. Carmen. Oh, crazy like Carmen. That. So crazy Carmen comes sweeping in. Sweeping in. Uh, uh, homeboy comes sea. out, shoots the people. By this point, there's only like ten roughnecks left. Yep. Or something like that. Like everyone's dead. Uh, Ratchek fall. Uh, oh, there's, there's just, more, like there's more members of the resistance left at the end of Last Jedi. Yeah, pretty much. It's all, Some, but they all, both movies, they all fit on one ship. Something comes up from <laughs> underneath <laughs> the fort, pulling Ratchek in, and, only up and, to his waist, and, and he then, starts freaking, I mean, he's obviously been grabbed by something, and he starts freaking out, he's mutilated. and they're trying to pull him out, because everyone has so much dedication to him, because he saved everyone. Yeah, he um, saved everyone's life. And they're back all jumping and back in and there, numb. and they're pulling him out, and he's like, oh my god, and they pull him out, and his two legs are fucking gone. Yep. Like, and he's yeah. trailing mm. blood and innards, and like he's not going to make it much longer. And he you looks know at what Johnny to Rico, do. You know what to do. You know what And he's like, yes, do. sir. And he starts pointing his gun. You he goes, know. Yes. And this is like, he's going to do it. It, it. They pause for a moment because they're like, nah, man, you can't do that. And then the guy, and then and then he, he screams, do it. Yeah. And then Rico shoots him and he's dead. Yeah. And then he was, and then he was like, oh, I, I meant just call an Uber. Like, <laughs> that was you know, like, not yeah, what I meant. Remember that one time I needed you to call me an Uber and you shot me? Yeah. Oh. But I thought you were trying to say, do it. I was. Yeah, do just, it. I, I just call need, the Uber. I just needed a medic. Just, just why didn't you call for a medic? Guys, well, I think. Uber was closer. Guys, I think Chad's telling us he wants us to shoot him. No, I just need an Uber home. Mm, yeah, he said it yeah. again, guys. Well, it's not, this isn't the first time that, uh, that I've been in this situation. So anyhow, they shoot him. And they try to get on the, on the convoy to head out. And uh, Diz, she grabs a grenade, throws the pin. This giant bug sh- uh, pops up. And it's got like a little opening where it's about to start shooting. Like, she, fire acid, no, no, fire she, acid, she, fire she, acid. she gives him one, like, just like. Bam, right in the kisser. Yeah, right when it starts to shoot, she chucks it. Right in the kisser. Quarterback Pow. of Quantum Ball on the on the football field court place. Right in the kisser. Right in the kisser. It blows right the, the head kisser. up. She's like, yeah, I just blew something. I threw a grenade like a football, and it blew a bug up. That's it's pretty. Rad. It was awesome. It, a was, lot of it awesome, was red. It was but red. But she celebrated way Diz. too soon. Exactly. No. We go no. And she stops and turns around, which is never a good thing. Anymore. Don't do that when you're on a planet full of giant bugs. No. Huh. She turns around. And Who then said another, it? What could you? Someone what could it? possibly be behind you other than giant, a giant bugs? Giant bug. And there's a giant bug, and the giant bug st- stabs her like Slices eleven her times. She, she has no fewer than four gaping holes, just like yeah. in, and then through they, her torso. They kill the bug. They get on the thing. They they start lifting up to the to the uh, to the star destroyer. Sorry, don't know what else to call it. Uh, and there's this moment between like Rico and Diz where she's like dying in his arms. It's like that. It's kind of like that moment that they make fun of in uh, uh, Tropic Thunder between like uh, mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. and, and Ben Stiller's yeah. character. Yeah, you know she was uh, she was uh, she was almost nominated for an Oscar for that scene. Mm, one could hope. No, I mean, no, yeah, she she yeah. was uh, all, she almost yeah. Johnny, she I'm, was I'm dying, Johnny. Yeah. She was she was in the she was in the talks. There was a campaign going, didn't quite take off though. Mm. Shame, damn shame. I believe that she ended up. Uh, she ended up getting with four bumped. holes in her. Yes, she did. <laughs> they were right there. She, she uh, was very dead. I believe she ended up getting bumped by uh, Cameron Diaz for well, something you know, for this something about Mary. Man. It's all political. So it's all political. Well, you got to play those bug politics. Exactly. He didn't play the game. It's the four holes. Anyhow, she's dead. Moving on. They fly off and they're like, oh, fuck, what have the bugs done? We can't let them get away with this. There's like six of us left. Yeah. <laughs> they they somehow. Wait, when do they crash? When do they crash? Oh, this is later. So, so like, what happens next is they go up. He re- and then uh, John Boy Rico, like, realizes Carmen flying. And uh, she, she thinks Rico's been dead this whole time because she read the report that the army reported. Johnny Rico, yeah. I thought you were dead. Oh, my God. Don't believe everything you hear. No, no, no. What he said was, she's like, I thought you were dead. And he's like, I'm not, but a lot of my troopers are. Just real, like, Captain America. Yeah. About the whole thing. And then it cuts to a scene from Star Trek 2 where it's a funeral. And there, there's some words said, and they take the casket and shoot it in space. 
but it's for Diz and it's Rico. It's not my old friend. Yeah, it's pretty much. It's really kind of sad. And I, 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 I made the observation. I was like, okay, so they're having a funeral for one person after so many people have died in this movie. Right. I have like an there to are that. hundreds of people who have fucking died, and they're like, oh no. We Listen, have someone important who's died. Time for a yeah, funeral. A main character died. We need a funeral. Uh, but I have. I I might have an answer to that. Um, basically, so when the bugs take people out, it's just carcasses left over. No one comes back. It's just like limbs, so, maybe if you're lucky. But she was on. She was on board. She yeah, she was back. on board. Uh, her her remains remained all the way back to the starship to the start of the story. Mm. So I feel like that's why they. That they actually, had a they, that that actually makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, they like actually we had like, a body to give a funeral. Exactly. So. so they have a funeral for Diz, but I feel like in a way it was kind of for Still everybody. You know, mm-hmm. even though Rico talks about Diz, they never get a chance to go to the funeral because people die in so quickly. They have so much to do, and there are no bodies left. Yeah, you know, and it, this seems like a, a society that would be really big on ceremony to me. So if they have a chance to have a funeral, everyone's gonna go. I don't know. Uh, ceremony to me is uh, is almost too close to like art. And when uh, when Carmen makes a reference to art in science class, yeah, she's Im- she's immediately she's like kind of shot down and said, well, "Don't yeah. think so highly I, of yourself." What I think yeah. of ceremony is ritual and an ancient idea, and other ancient ideas of warfare and honor. Yeah, I get what Chad's come saying out of it. Like, so I feel like. They they kind of tie themselves back to their old world a little bit by same way that. that this would be the society that would have a military parade, even though that's a totally arbitrary thing. Like this is yeah. the society, but that's that but that's do just it. it. Like, but that's but that's just it. Like, a uh, uh, a society of bugs would have no reason to have a military parade. A military no, parade. No, I'm, I'm talking a, about the the people. It's, like, a, it's a little bit too close to. So I I don't know like. Because I think that I think that Highland was a little bit more towards the bugs, like I think I, I think that's kind of where he was coming from. Who which... Yeah, but I feel like if the society existed, if the, if the Federation were real, like if only we could train all of all of the world, all of the human race, to wake up at six a.m. and give a perfect shave and a perfect crease yeah, well, to their do. clothes yeah. and yeah, well, and let's put this way: so, so their part of the and... po- let's, let's consider this part of the. Uh, Propaganda earlier of Sharon stuff was this one where it was a news about a, a murder, and the 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 news anchor, I guess you could call him the narrator, is just like a man was caught for murdering someone this morning and tried oh, yeah. this afternoon. And oh, he's right guilty! Now, guilty! He's dead. Sentencing Ex- death. Ex- Executions tonight at six. Done. All, All channels. channels. All channels. Not only is that uh, to fear monger the the population to not breaking the law and become murderers. That has to be a ritual. You need something to present because people naturally want to participate in something, some sort of. Well, that's more like a ceremony ca- higher than themselves. That, that's almost more like capitalistic to me. Uh, yeah, I, but I like don't... the idea of participating in watching this man who has committed crimes against the state. This idea of this, what we do when dealing with this, but to that's, make a better but, society. But they're not doing it. They're, 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 they're not doing it like as a ritual. They're doing it like probably for entertainment. Like it's like shock value entertainment. I don't know to it's, demand to me it's more all fear. channels. I don't know. It has like a fascist tinge to it. It does have a fascist. They but do, it's it like does, public hangings. Like yeah, it does. Yeah. Don't get out of line. Yeah, like because a, it's like across all channels. You don't yeah. have a choice but to yeah, watch. Yeah, but but don't cross the line. But also, like, I don't know, man. If done enough times and used for something, and if it makes a purpose, it does become ritualistic. And the way that they broadcast the, uh, I, I forget what the what the officer's rank was, but you know, like they they had the guy who was going on about it's like oh, we are going to take down the bugs, and then like three hundred thousand people die in the first oh, invasion. Was, oh yeah, he has so he, he so he resigns. Yeah, he's he a sky resign. marshal. He yeah, re, he yeah. resigns, and then the next sky marshal or whatever we will comes never in. That gets kind of judge dready like too. This. Yeah. So like, we must learn to understand the bugs before we kill the bugs. So they they send out. The fucking the roughnecks again, and that's when they start capture. Well, that's, 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 that's when they start bombing and all that. So, so, so I feel like so at the, at the funeral, uh, Rico says some nice words about Diz, and then they shoot her sunglass hut, sunglass case of a casket into space like they did Spock, and then out of nowhere, Neil Patrick they're gonna make Harris a good casket again. someday. Yep. He just pops back up. <laughs> He's well, like, he's, intel- he's, he's intelligent. He's, he's, he's like no, he can do whatever yeah, this he whole wants. Whole time is just underpinning of. 
Neil Patrick Harris, Harris's character, who you don't see enough, is in military intelligence because he's possibly clairvoyant, if not psychic, and he's really smart. And he can help them figure it out. And he well, we know, we know Rico's not. Yeah, he can't. Yeah, Rico's a great soldier. Neil Patrick Harris, he, he, they're where they need to be in the, in the Federation. In, uh, in the Federation's eye. Yeah, and so MPH is just like, Rico, I'm sorry, that was your unit. We knew it was low probability of anyone surviving. And he's and like, the, and this is when the ball drops, and this is what, what also supports my theory about the, Carmen's there, the commander, she's not happy. what's his name, the ba- Balzazar? What? Wow, <laughs> what? What? Is it Zorak? Razjak? Ra- Rad Why don't you just call him Darth no, no, Vader. That's, that's the lieutenant. He's and dead. And the Bendigo. Uh, coming in down. The rain and fire from the sky now, folks. So, the, I, what's the commander's name? I can't remember. What, Z- Xander? Yeah. Oh, the, the pilot the guy Xander? guy that got his legs eaten off. Oh, Rad Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's Rad Shack. You know who I'm talking about. Rad Shack. Shack. He's, he's the lieutenant. That's what I said. Rad Shack and a Bendigo. <laughs> so. What, Rorschach? We... There you go. Anyhow, this this supports my theory that he might have known because when Neil Patrick Hare shows up, he says, oh, yeah, that was a low probability of survival. We we basically knew you guys weren't going to make it out of there when we sent you in there. And he's like, whoa, why did you send us in there? No, no, Carmen said that. Carmen's like, well, you sent them in there even though you know they were going to die? And he's like, this is about the human species. It's oh, yeah. a numbers we're in game. It for the species, boys and girls. It's simple numbers. This real straightforward. Because he's like, we couldn't expend the cost of having a strike against the planet unless we knew for sure there was a brain bug. Yeah, and, and the, how everything was just previously handled shows a strategy by the bugs because the, ba- the bugs basically like sneak attacked them and tricked them into forming this trap to capture more soldiers. They realized there is some intelligence of the bugs. The bugs don't do that. If the bugs were dumb, they would just go kill all the bugs because the bugs are just roaming around and reacting. But you don't think the bugs are dumb because they're organized? And the bugs, we may have been this point. They laid a trap. They laid a trap, but we we may have been this point. The bugs doesn't eat anybody. The bugs just kills people yeah, they to just kill, kill them. They, it's, it's so much more advanced than an animal. That anytime it, most times when it kills something, it's either out of defense. Or they want resources. Or they want resources. Most animals do that. So this giant bug is so much more advanced than just a big scary thing. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's that uses its, in a group. its 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 uh, appendages and mouth to just kill people. And, and it was about that time <laughs> that Denise Richards and Patrick Muldoon and their little escape pod crashed into the mountain that yeah. was the molehill. Because they do another drop, and uh, their their star destroyer. I'm done apologizing. Their star destroyer gets uh, blown up. And they have to get to the escape pod. Again, because the same thing that happened the first time happens again with the blue fucking feces. It's so dumb. That's what it, it turns out it was it's like bug feces. Yeah, and it's, that's it's, what it turns out that it was. It's bug poop. Oh, you made that great joke about... Uh, oh, okay. The, so on the first drop, when they're dropping the the, first, the bug D-Day drop, the one captain okay, says... Okay, number two. Steady as she goes. And we're like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then we see bugs shooting giant blue flames out of their ass. And then you into find the air, out that and they it's blow like, oh, it up. It's, it's poop. And I'm like, wow, no. It, it's the poo poo. They are steady as it goes, number two. It's yep. the poo poo. It's the... <laughs> shooting at but then that so happens. Let's talk about Proust. But that happens again, and they end up inside the molehill. And once yeah, they crash yeah. in there, mm-hmm. uh, Patrick Muldoon makes the great decision to open the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have just stayed in the hatch. Just stay there. The, the hey. bad effects. Uh, spaceship hatch. He had to man spread out into the and man explain his way into why they should get out <laughs> into into the beyond the hatch area. So but he as does. They're, as they're crashing, Johnny Rico sees him crashing. It's the distress signal. And he, knows. he knows his ex. How does he know? He just knows. So they go in after, and and we well, cut back. Well, originally they they weren't going to. Well, well, they're not going they in. It's not a it's, it's not a rescue mission, but they do have to go in and search for a brain bug because yeah. Neil yep. Patrick Harris says there is one, so they got to go get one. They're trying mm. to coordinate with other squads to meet up and like kind of roam the catacombs to like see if they can find a brain bug and communicate between the two. But it's and, not a rescue mission. No, no and Johnny Rico kind of has that moment where he they're like, okay, he's like, oh, he's on the radio with Carmen, and it, shit's obviously going down. She's about to die, and then his uh, assistant. Who's from what you say? Some show? 
Like with The Walking Dead. Dead or something? Yeah, yeah Seth, he's, Seth, he's Gabriel. Uh, Seth, he's, uh, what's Gilliam. his name? Seth he, Gilliam. He, he Father the Gabriel. Lead. He takes the lead for Johnny Rico because he can see he's emotional. He's like, all right, rescue squad. We're going this way. We're going to find him. And Johnny Rico's like, no, stop. We all know they're dead. But here's the thing. They're not. Five minutes goes by. <laughs> and, and and you it made and you made a comment lines. whenever the scene happened. It's like they like gear up and you know like they've got guns. They're looking like badasses. And you're just like, oh come on, the two of you are gonna take down all of these bugs. Like it takes like eight of them to bring down one. Yeah. And we sure enough, guns. sure enough, they take down maybe three of the bugs before they get overwhelmed. At most. At most. At most. And and you know they get like pinned to the ground by very sharp. The pictures. the chagrin to Zach Morris gets one through the through the leg. Yeah. And, and, and she gets half, one through the shoulder. And and a third of a Nev Campbell three way gets one through the shoulder. That's a hell of a reference you just Wow. We're talking I about totally where it comes we're from. talking about not about a nineties movie with yeah. a nineties hottie. Yeah. I'm doing nineties math and that adds up. It adds up. <laughs> Do the nineties math. <laughs> it adds up. And so they so they're both they're both wounded and they're pinned down. And Denise Richards asked the question, like, why don't they just fucking kill us? And he's just like because we have valuable information. Yeah, the they, bugs they're keeping us alive, or they've gotten. Um, yeah, they recognize that they've got something. They've they're gotten, not, or they've been ordered. And I think, yeah. the, I think the if they're the brain bug, it's more like see, a brain bug is controlling all of them. Probably, yeah, it's psych, uh, like psychic links. So it's just other like subtext of psychic links in this movie that's kind of only slightly alluded to. And actually, in the cable version that I watched a lot as a kid, they straight up cut out. All the subplot of of psychic of the communication psychic kind of stuff. Yeah, it's cut and out propaganda. Of the propaganda. The psychic part's cut out for time, and then all the and then all the crazy stuff like the shower scenes cut out because obviously. But they keep them yeah, alive. There's a, there's a lot of boobs and butts. Boobs and butts. Boobs and butts. But I guess they really had a Princess Leia and Luke moment when they're like, they're alive. Feel that they're. Alive. Yeah. Neil yeah, Patrick Harris is happen. like yeah, Yoda. Yeah, yeah. So they get taken by the bugs, and then once uh, the Roughnecks, who are mostly like 18-year-old kids at this point, like it's mostly like... Who are these kids? They're fresh out of boot. Fresh out of boot. We're the old men, Ace. We've been, we've been here for six months. We're yeah. the old men. Yeah, yeah. It's been a week, and you know, it's crazy. They so have, they have run, happened in a week. They, ha- they have run through all the attractive people in the movie, and they are down to the ugly folks. They're like, oh my god. Just like we, we, got a just like we told like you. We straight sixes up in here. Just like we told you it finally happened. Oh my god. And so they're going in looking for the brain bug, and they get to like a fork in the road, so to speak. Just, Johnny's there's, like, I'm there's no fork, right. but you know what I'm talking about. And everybody's right. everybody's going to the left, and then Rico kind of stares off to the right and decides he's going off that way. Yeah, and they're like, "Listen, man, if you if you Gabriel's change like, order, they'll yeah. hang you." They'll and he's like, you. "Well, then I'm going to go. I need two volunteers. The rest of you squad that I am in charge of, hey, stick to the mission. Stick to the mission. Go to the brain. Stick to the mission. The mission. So they go and they go and they find and they trying to find Carmen and Homeboy, and then we go back to Carmen and Homeboy." And it's this weird thing where, like, the bugs are, like, kind of holding them there. Yeah, it's, it's, they, like, it's like the bugs are having a ceremony. Yeah, almost. right on. And then some cockroaches bugs came out, like the... Uh, the sea uh, turtle size. Sea turtle size bugs. And they're, like... They come out and a little then, bit, And then scatter, they're escorting they the big, bad brain, brain bug. bug. Okay, let's let's dissect this brain bug. You like really? the movie did. The vagina mouth? Okay, so it's vagina oh. mouth. Vagina mouth, and it's really big. Uh, it's flesh scrotum, scrotum body? Scrotum dick brain body it's dick colored and like a little bit longer than a brain but it's shaped like a brain if you're standing on the ground basically everything they can't show on cable they're like we're gonna make it into an alien and we're gonna show it on ca- yeah. cable yeah at the top of his George Carlin saying a bunch of dirty words like it's just going for yeah, what are, what are visual aesthetics that are just right out you pretty much whatever you think of when you say they can't do that and if I, they did I would go damn that's what the brain bug is. And then the brain bug does this thing where it gets a homeboy out front because he's the higher ranking officer. And through vagina mouth, this three hinge this arm spear spike, spike just, spear with a red tip. And they have a there. they have a moment where like he spits on him. Yeah, he's just like, like blah like, blah like, human one day, race. One one my, something someone like me like is gonna, me gonna kill, you. kill you. Kill you. He spits on it. He spits on it, and then the brain bug 
boom, <laughs> hits a spike through his head, and starts you, sucking his brains out. You see the, you, and because it's Paul Verhoeven, you see the brains going through the tube. The tube. Yep. You, like you his, see the guy's face is like the brains are leaving. Brains. Totally and the dehydrated and, all and that. skinny and gray. It's and it's like because it's minutes. Paul Verhoeven. Yeah. yeah you it's see really all intense. It's like that 1990. Total Recall face mask thing, mm-hmm. where it's like you know probably like you know the Very Jim much. H- the Jim Henson shop or someone like it made that thing that it looks like a person, and so that happens, and right about the time where they're done with him, they bring they're, out Carmen. They're about to move on to Carmen. Carmen who's right next to him, but Carmen has a little. She's got trick, a knife. A little trick up her sleeve. She's got a knife. That's not a knife. That's a spoon. No, she not. slid. A, she sl- he slid her the knife. He's, so she's got a knife that no bug knows what a knife is. So or, or nobody wait. saw him give her the knife. Exactly. Who so, cares? She who uses cares? it. She slices off the apparatus. Of, of brain sucking. And uh, brain bug's like, damn She out. can reach up that high. He, yeah. Brain exactly. bug starts freaking Laying out. Laying on the ground with a giant, giant spear flesh wound. through her freaking shoulder. She can reach up seven feet and cut off that proboscis. Because who would have thought that a human being would ever use a knife? A knife. a knife. All right, we're gonna. So, so as the other bugs get closer to her, that's when that's Rico, when Rico shows Baby up. Busey, and Father Gabriel show up, and Rico's playing hardball. He walks in with a, with a nuke, a nuke grenade already armed. He's like, hey, and he's you know like, what, you, you know, know what, what this, this is. is. He's like, because they're it. smart. And that's what they use. Uh, he he uses that at cover to like to get Carmen back, and that's what he uses as cover to get out of there. Um. Seth Gilliam kind of gets fucked up. Father in the Gabriel process. gets like a slice across the back. His whole spleen. So like he exposed. takes the nuke and yeah, he's, he's just like, like, "Come on, get some. You like that? Yeah, you like I'll that? hold you it. You guys, you, you guys, guys action, run away. He, you guys he run has, away. He, I, I'm gonna stay here. And he has the action like I'm a hold them off roll for yeah. a minute. Get some. You want some? Come get some. Which you Go hear multiple some. times. And then you hear the nuke beeping faster and faster, and then it goes off and. They do the action run and the action jump into the explosion. It's mostly action running. It's and mostly a running. Action jump. It's more it of a hu- it's more old. of a skip, but it's all yeah. an excuse for us to end up back on the outside of the mole hill. That's also a mountain. So they 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 uh, so uh, Rico and Neil Patrick Harris. They, well, Rico, it's who's with the group. It's Rico, baby. It's baby. Rico, baby Busey, and, and, and Denise Richards. And, <laughs> And they meet up with the rest of the squad, and they they hear the good news. There's a bunch of cheering. Someone we finally got, got, got the brain one. Bug. We got a brain yeah, bug. We got a brain got bug. bug. They walk up. They see it. Up comes MPH himself with other higher ranking officers. They pull up the brain bug. It's got net all over itself. They've been pulling it like it's cattle that's wounded. Yeah. And he, and he puts a hand, hand on, on it. it. He's like, and "What's it? What, what's what? What? what tell something. What's yeah, it saying?" Some admiral's like, "What's it thinking, Colonel?" And he's there, and he's like trying to think really hard. And, Actually, the and dude, Neil Patrick, Neil Patrick Harris, Harris owns this role with some great face acting. He's so good at the face acting. Also known as acting. It's, it's afraid. It's afraid. It's afraid. Woo! Woo! Everyone cheers. And, and, then, and, then, like the, and, the, and then the then the five armies all cheer. Yeah, and then the friends from high school reunite and made this. Talk about how you know whenever we're together, everything's all right, just like back in high school. And, and the the girl is putting her arms over the guys, just like she did in the high school shot. It, Except they're, this they're time, she has a fucking hole through one of her shoulders. She's and I'm fine. Like, oh yeah, no yeah. human. The can movie's put their arm over. over. Oh, just hits John's computer. I feel bad. But no, but 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 you're right though. But you're right. Like no, she seriously. It's not that. She, it's not that. That she, is a she mortal got, wound. She didn't get tagged in the shoulder. She has a gaping hole yeah, through her shoulder. Gi- dude, you can throw a spear shoved through her shoulder. Dude, you like, can throw a baseball through that shoulder. So and she just got her arm over one of them. Like hey guys, it's like old times. And nothing yeah. can. And then, I'm not gonna bleed all over. And all then, of oh, you. This, this is the part I really like about the movie. The MPH is just like, and to think back, no one will remember this was the time. This was the. Second, this is when changed. it all turned. It all turned, all because of a drill instructor named Zim. And it cuts to and it. We're like, who the fuck is Zim? That guy. What? And it's 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 Clancy from the beginning of the movie, man. Clancy the guy who himself. wanted to go to combat. We didn't mention. Yeah, that, did he we? gets busted he, down to he private. He wanted combat so bad. He's like, the only way you're seeing combat is if you bust yourself down to private. Which we he clear. Does. Yes, sir. 
Which well, they guess, wanted him. They wanted him to stay as a drill sergeant. Guess what he did? He, he busted, busted himself down, down private. private. He has then, to address Rico, who is now lieutenant, as sir, sir. because he's a private. But so, he he got the brain bug. That seems like such a like. What's the the author's name? Uh, uh Heinlein. Robert, Heinlein. Robert. Robert. This Heinlein. seems like something he would love. The idea of a drill inspector willing to do the right thing and get him get himself. Demoted, low, yeah, demoted yeah. It's, to a lower rank to go. It's amazing. Be it's, the it's, hero. It's amazing that the guy that made RoboCop is the guy that made this movie. Because like, like when I read this, I read the book after seeing the movie. I read the book like I saw the movie as a kid. I saw the movie as an adult. Then I read the book as an adult. And if I had not seen the movie those two times or in those two phases of my life, like, and I read the book, I'd say, okay, so when is Clint Eastwood making the movie? Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, it feels this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because that's that. who I would expect to make a movie based on the book that I read, yeah. not the guy that made RoboCop. Yeah, mm, yeah, crazy. It'd be like, hey, you read Anne Rand? Well, Terry Gilliam's making that movie. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> fucking. Dope. I would pay a thousand dollars. Well, all to you... watch Terry Gilliam make Alice Shrugged into forty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch well, what that. What you got is Starship Troopers. So yeah, that's why I got to be grateful. With, you know, yeah, yeah, it's device. amazing that we got this. I don't know who allowed it to happen. So the movie ends. But with TriStar like, put their name on it. Yeah, yeah. And they also did, as yeah. we talked about, uh, Lost Skeleton and Cadaver. Yeah, so they got them. they got quite a record. Yeah, uh, they were just making good moves back then. I'm probably still are. I don't know really now. I don't pay much attention. But the movie ends with more propaganda. Yep. But, it, but it comes full cycle, circle. It comes full right? circle. So all the characters we've seen are in the propaganda Because ads. in the beginning, they were the ones watching the yeah. propaganda. And then they become the propaganda. Now yeah. they are in the propaganda. So, so, so uh, uh, Carmen becomes a captain of her own ship, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say they were like hella good looking for that propaganda video. Oh, as yeah, well. You don't put ugly people in propaganda. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they gotta, they, they're, they're selling the product. You can't have ugly... Propagandist doesn't work. Doesn't work. Go watch the propaganda. That would be a good band name, though. The the ugly propagandists. We'll put it in the file of good band names that we can't remember. But even even Rico gets that thing of like uh, soldiers like John Rico, uh, and they show him with these cool new guns, and he does. And he Come quotes, on, roughnecks, you want to live forever? Exactly. No, he calls them apes. Like oh, a yeah, Charles. That's right. You like this Charles Heston thing kind of floating over the movie. Where two or three times they refer to the soldiers as apes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the is, drill sergeant does that. Yeah, and then, first, and then yeah. Ratchek says, come on, you apes, you want to live forever. And then all Rico does when he becomes lieutenant is just, just does emulate what the, does. Yeah. And he does, and they go, and they still, they still fight the good fight of beating the bugs. Roll credits. <sighs> That's all you need. Starship oh. Troopers, folks. I don't know. There's a whole, there's a whole lot of subtext. There's there. a whole thing. There's a whole lot of subtext. We talk all the time about conspiracy theories. I remember, okay, I remember what I was going to say because I was deep in thought and then gotcha. I lost it. But wasn't it kind of spooky because like in the propaganda video, they were like, some people are lucky and some people are just unlucky. And it was kind of weird because I felt like Johnny Rico boy was always so lucky. That's, that's, he was that's, just getting... That's kind of one of the points. But Promotion. Funny, cause, uh, like the, everyone who really believes in the, 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 the Federation keeps saying luck is pointless. Luck is not a factor. That's true, and he's like the uh, American dream of like. Oh yeah, he's got America all over. The yeah. All the good things happen to he, him. He's also a cool character, but on the other hand, of the unlucky, I feel like Diz is very unlucky because she's she's actually I feel like a stronger soldier than he is. Like she oh, yeah. would be better at every point. Maybe I I don't know, but like I feel like she's a really strong um, character, and essential um, person on the team, but. But she's always there, yet he's like always the one getting like the promotion and like yeah in the, and the right most, right the place right time. Diz ever gets, even though she assists Johnny in pretty much everything mm-hmm. that gets him falling upward promoted. The best she gets is squad leader, mm-hmm. and she deserves a lot more. She is like the quarterback. Like when she throws that grenade in that giant boss bug, that is the most. It's because she's got killer aim throwing stuff. Yeah, and right. that is the most she is badass solid. thing I see. He's like, always like, like blocking Johnny, for Johnny. Johnny did a similar thing up. earlier in the movie, but it was more because of just recklessness. Yeah, he's, yeah, he 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 just like straight up cowboys it, himself. It, it had nothing to do with skill. It was yeah. just like I'm going to recklessly endanger myself yeah. and hope for the best. He jumps on a bug. He shoots the bug enough to where there's a hole. He throws a nuke grenade. And then hides, and the bug blows up, 
and you get all the orange he's goo. The, it's a lot. Of, it's really cool. He's so the like, hammer. He's the he, yeah. he's he's the sheer force of violence but that's like going Diz to wipe out carpenter. Hiroshima. I feel like this is the carpenter. Like she, as is mentioned earlier in the movie. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I feel like I don't know. Yeah, that's and that's 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 why this movie is so worth talking about. Is because like Heinlein loves characters like Johnny Rico. Who like they just kind of sort of blindly fall into it and then find themselves embracing it because they fail upwards into it. And the movie, of course, treats characters like Diz Flores much differently, who are much more skilled and apt and capable. But their luck isn't as good. Mm-hmm. You know, like even though they mean better and they're capable of more, just their luck isn't quite as good and so they fall short. It's it's quite of a fuck of a thing that exists. Justice for Diz. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, seriously. Yeah, justice but for Diz. It's, it's, it's quite a fuck of a thing that exists. <clears throat> That's really good. Just just being being that it was written by who it was written by, and then it was made into a film by who made it into a film. Just it's quite an anomaly. And uh I can't believe that it exists, but I'm glad that it does. Not only does it exist, there's a bunch of sequels no one's ever seen. Yeah, I probably will never see those, but I'm very, I'm very I'm not, happy with this, with this one that yeah, we have. I'm cool with it. I've never seen them. I'm assuming they're just bug movies. Yeah, that's, that's probably what probably. it is. I don't think Paul Verhoeven had anything to do with any. I don't of think them. so. I think Casper and Van Dien's in like the third one, and one's yeah, looks he's like he's like he's in one of them. Yeah. Oh, apparently, it was nominated for one Oscar. Casper Van Dien. Or no, no, apparently this movie was. Let me guess. Effects. Yep. Okay, called it. <laughs> yep. It was good it. for '97. The effects were pretty it good. It was. It was, but uh. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I mean, I don't know, like, like this, we could probably each go off and write a dissertation on the implications of, of this movie and all the, all the nuances in it. So what do you think, dear listener? Do you think that this is a triumph of fascism over bug armies? Or do you think that the cognitive dissonance between the director and the source material is too much for anyone to handle? Let us know. So, so does this movie say kill all humans or does it say kill all coffee? I think it kills. You know what I think? I think, I think this movie quotes Metallica and says, <laughs> "Kill them all." I feel like I know what this movie is saying. Kill all bugs. Asterisk. Don't uh, get hit by an asteroid. Asterisk. No asteroids kill humans. Anyways, that's gonna do it for us. This this go around on movie night autopsy. Somebody has to put a stop to all of this, and it's gonna be me. My name is Sam. I'm Chad. I'm Asher. And I'm Grace. And thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. What's up, crew? If you got any idea of what you would like for us to talk about on the minute or on Movie Night Autopsy podcast, hit us up on the social medias. You can hit us up on Twitter at Movie underscore Autopsy. Check us out on Facebook at Movie Night Autopsy. Always feel free to email us, contact at Movie Night Autopsy.com. <laughs>